electric atmosphere here. The crowd was here two hours. Never been a game like this down here in Chapel Hill. Let's go up to the booth now to Ron Franklin and Mike Godfrey for their thoughts. Guys? You know, Chris, it was interesting. In watching Florida State when they arrived here yesterday, very cold and damp. The players were bundled up. But to me, the most important thing was is they filed in. I heard Daryl Bush doing an interview, and he talked in terms of if we win. I heard Bobby Bowden say the same thing in an interview. If we win. I guess what I'm saying, Mike, I didn't see that supremely confident attitude that Florida State normally carries with them. Ron, when you watch a team on tape, and I'm sure Florida State's watched a lot of tape on North Carolina, they can gain a lot of respect because North Carolina has a lot of good athletes and they match up very well against this Florida State team. Mike, take us through some tips that you see in this football game tonight that will win for either side. I think the big thing for North Carolina is not let Travis Minor get started in any kind of running game because they need to turn it into a one-dimensional game and get after uh, Thad Busby because to me, Thad Busby He's the key player in this whole ball game tonight. I think one of the differences also is I stood on the practice field with Mike and uh, and Coach Brown on Wednesday afternoon, and it was raining like the Dickens. And he said, for once, we normally want Florida State, we want them to play in the rain to neutralize the speed. This year, all our coaches are upset because we want to play them on a fast track. I think that speaks volumes. Carl Ravitch, let's go back to you. Hi, Ron. Thank you very much. Chris and company as well. Back to you guys before we get to the kick at 7.30. The Residence in College Football School Board Show continues. Bino Cook mentioned the Heisman race. Says his vote now goes to the Michigan player. What about the Tennessee player? Peyton back in his place and putting up some big numbers. Ryan Leaf also making a name for himself for Washington State. This college football scoreboard is presented by Residence Inn by Marriott. Room to relax, room to work, room to breathe. And now, here's your host, Carl Ravage. All right, check out the SEC, Southern Miss in Tennessee. Harold Shaw taking the handoff. 11 yards for the touchdown, Southern Miss running over the balls early 7-3. Second quarter in a 13-all game, Peyton Manning. Touch to Peerless Price, 2013, Tennessee. Manning then. It arguably his best day this season. Marcus Nash, eight yards, touchdown, 34-13, Tennessee. Manning had recently come under criticism on the ensuing kickoff, Eric Booth. He'll go 96 yards for the touchdown. And it's a 34-20 ball game, Southern Miss refusing to go anywhere. Manny continues to put up great numbers. They add 10 points, 44-20, Tennessee on top. Peyton Manning, 33 of 51, 380 yards, four touchdowns, no interceptions, and one rushing touchdown. LSU and Alabama, Kevin Falk sitting early because of that tight hamstring. It loosened up for him. First quarter, Lance Tucker for Bama, fumbled the snap, widely recovers in the end zone, 7-0 Tigers. Second quarter, same score, LSU with the ball on their own 45. Herb Tyler dropping back, going way up top. Abraham Booty is there. Touch, not a touchdown, down though, inside the 10. Two plays later, here's your touchdown, Falk from four yards away, his 11th rushing touchdown of the year, 14-0 LSU. Late in the fourth, it's 20 to nothing. Here goes Falk again. 53 yards, second of the game, stiff arms his way to Pager. LSU a winner, 27 to nothing. They are five and two in the conference. Alabama drops below 500 at four and five. Bama must win their last two to become bowl eligible. Vandy in Florida, 20-7 to seven, Florida, a winner over Vanderbilt. Noah Brindice gets the start, 13 of 25, 222 yards, and two touchdown passes. Well, for a while, again, it looked like the Pac-10 was going to have a huge, huge day because we thought for a while Nebraska was going to lose. Washington and Oregon battling back and forth in this one. Ducks have given this team all sorts of problems, but the number six team came back and ultimately falls. 31-28, the final score. Marcus Tuiasa Sopo had a start this game. No Brock Heward. Tuiasa Sopo goes 15 of 30, 261. Arizona State next up for Oregon. UCLA next up for Washington. Arizona State and Cal, they are playing now in the first quarter. Bagels are on the board there. Ryan Leaf and company, look out below. 13 of 21, 305, four touchdowns, including a rushing touchdown, matching almost Peyton Manning's number, 63 love in that one. 
The Buckeyes of Ohio State still thinking Rose Bowl 31-3 over Minnesota. That game now a final. Joe Germain a good day, 17 of 21. Three touchdowns, 211 yards. Well, prior to that Nebraska finish, this one was crazy. Michigan State, Purdue, Billy Dickin, Brian Alford. Oh, does he get laid out? This was a hard-hitting game all afternoon. Over two minutes left to go. The Spartans try to increase an 11-point lead, and the field goal was blocked. Roosevelt Colvin, 62 yards, touchdown. And could it be slipping away for the Spartans? Purdue missed a two-point conversion. They're still down five. They recover the onside kick. 46 seconds left. Edwin Watson. Touchdown, Purdue up 22-21. Michigan State, last chance. Chris Gardner, he just had the kick block. Negative thoughts in his head. Snap, hook off the first tee. No good from 44 yards out, and the Spartans drop one. 22-21 as Purdue comes back and is victorious. Meantime, Wisconsin gets it done without Ron Dane. They knock off number 14, Iowa, who really dominated this game from a strategical point of view. Tim Dwight, four for 74 and a touchdown. He was outstanding. They outgained him 309 to 225 yards. To the Big East, Donovan McNabb. Kevin Johnson, quick move to the outside. He's got help downfield. He didn't even need it. He outruns the defensive back. 66 yards for Johnson. Syracuse, 20. Boston College, 13. That is a final score. Being seen right now on ESPN2, Miami and Virginia Tech. Miami is on top, playing real tough in Blacksburg. 13-10, as there is five minutes left to go until they get to the half. Here is the rest of your Big 12 scoreboard. Kansas State, no problem with Kansas. 48-16, big play in this one. Gerald Neesman, a kickoff return for a touchdown as well as an interception return for a touchdown. A&M is a winner. Oklahoma State takes care of Oklahoma. The final score there, 30-7. Six turnovers for Oklahoma. Turnovers play, play a part in this one. Florida State, North Carolina comes your way just about 11 minutes from now. Residents in College Scoreboard Show continues, and Judgment Day has turned to Judgment Night. Certainly Judgment Night in the desert of Las Vegas. Evander Holyfield taking on Michael Moore. Complete post-fight analysis tonight at 11.30 Eastern Time. Sports Center with round-to-round -round coverage. Well, the bowl-bound teams, those at least hopeful. We saw Alabama lose. We talked about the Rose Bowl. Also, Colorado, where do they fit into this whole picture? Rick Neuheisel says, my team has not given up on the season. Down by four in the fourth, John Hessler, Javon Green, 30-yard touchdown. But Javon Green is called for excessive celebration. An unsportsmanlike 15-yard penalty on the extra points. The Buffs missed the point after. So instead of a three-point lead, it's only two. Thus, a field goal for Iowa State puts them ahead. Game, set. Match 38-37. No, Hessler keeps the buck in it. Fourth and ten. Chris Anderson. Big first down. The Buffs are moving. Twelve seconds left to go. Dwayne Charrington bounces his way into the end zone, and Colorado survives. They improve to five and four. 43-38. Yes, their bull hope still alive. Texas and Texas Tech just underway in a game that has to be very difficult for both teams to play in light of the sanctions for Texas Tech and the coaching situation for Texas. USC trounces Stanford 45-21. USC's got to win one of two to become bowl eligible. They get Oregon State and UCLA still on the menu. Duke and Clemson, second quarter. Clemson up a touchdown on their own 18. Elon Green gets nailed. Darius Clark. Touchdown. We're tied at 13 at the break. Duke up a touchdown. Then Green. Tony Horn. And watch the afterburners. 44 yards later, he breaks into the end zone. 2020 in overtime. Clemson's first possession. David Richardson. Good. 23-20 Clemson. Duke, third and 19. The freshman quarterback, Bobby Campbell, throws it up under a big rush. Raheem Abdullah picks it off. He goes in untouched to the end zone. 29-20, the final score. Flag on the play, but it was against Duke. So Clemson gets their sixth victory as they improve to 6-3. and three. Duke, their 16th straight ACC loss. Virginia over Georgia Tech, 35-31. 
Aaron Brooks, 19, 26, 308 yards, four touchdowns, and one interception. Wake Forest by two touchdowns over Rutgers, 28-14. The final Rutgers drops to 0-10. Last winless season for Rutgers, 1901. Next up, they face the Hurricanes. NC State pounds Maryland, 45-28. Dre Bly, a lot of talk about the height of the North Carolina receivers. How will they fare against Florida State? Judgment Night continues in a moment. The residency in College School Board show continues. Fresno State at Colorado State. The Bulldogs try to hammer the Rams. First quarter scoreless. And State's on the move. Kevin McDougal takes the pitch, goes right. And he is going right. All the way right for a 27-yard touchdown. 7-0 State. More from the Rams. Darren Hall on the reverse, untouched, 28 yards. 21-0, Colorado State. They roll 41-3. The sixth straight win. They outgain Fresno, 484-212. Air Force, yes, they wipe out Army, 24-0. The final score here, Air Force wins back the Commander-in-Chief's trophy. Meantime, Rice over TCU, 38-19. The final score here for Rice. Chad Nelson, three touchdowns, 118 yards. And Tulsa and BYU, BYU by 10, 49, 31, 39, I should say. It was 21-0 after the first quarter. Tulsa made a big, big game of it. Well, Chris, Lee, and Kirk are coming up with the Lombardi finalists. Judgment Day is turned to Judgment Night. One more piece of the puzzle to go. This college football scoreboard is brought to you by Quaker State. The quality your car deserves. Block of Granite is the Lombardi Award. It'll be awarded by the Houston Rotary Club in December to one of the top linemen or linebackers. And here are the four finalists announced for the first time. Katzenmore from Ohio State. Grant Wistrom in on that final tackle for the Huskers in overtime. And two guys you will see tonight. Number 85 for Florida State tonight, Andre Wadsworth. And keep an eye on number 87 for the Tar Heels, Greg Ellis. Back with Lee and Kirk, our final thoughts on the game. Will it be the Seminoles reestablishing their dominance of the Atlantic Coast Conference or North Carolina, their first win ever over the top five, announcing they are here as one of the elite? Well, I think the key in this football game is going to be field position. I think both teams have such dominating defenses that if you're a team trying to move the ball, you're trying to go 80 yards, it's very difficult. Look for turnovers, block punts, interceptions, fumbles. The team that can play the short field wins the game. I think if Carolina playing in front of this home crowd gets it done tonight and proves they are a big-time program. Well, guess who you think I'm picking? <laughs> I'll tell you what, if I'm Bobby Bond, I'm in the dressing room saying one thing. Nebraska stumbled, you're number two. You got a chance to win the national championship. Go, no! That's what I say. <laughs> yes, that's the best we can always you for a pep talk. The Tar Heels would like to tar and feather your beautiful little feathered headdress right there. It's the biggest game in Atlantic Coast Conference history. The atmosphere is magical. A light rain is beginning to fall as the Tar Heels and the Seminoles prepare to take the field. We're here all night at halftime. We'll talk about the poll implications of this ball game, the game in State College, and the amazing game in Columbia, Missouri. Lee, you've got to take that off very shortly. Yeah, please. Let's go up to the booth now. The guys who will call tonight's final chapter of Judgment Day, Ron Franklin and Mike Godfrey. Guys? Nestled among the peaceful pines lies North Carolina's Keenan Stadium. Tonight, Chapel Hill comes alive like never before. Never before has the ACC, let alone this town, seen a football game quite of this magnitude. Well, this town has gone nuts. It's gone nuts. We love all the hype. You get six tickets. I want it. I want it bad. God doesn't have six tickets to this game. It's a great time. It's just fun to be around campus now. Second rank Florida State arrives with a typical air of confidence. Bobby Bowden's teams have always been road warriors, battle tested in so many huge games. At home or in hostile territory, they are always ready. And the home run arsenal is as loaded as ever. Fifth rank North Carolina, they've marked this game of their calendar over a year ago. They've waited for a moment like this for what seems like an eternity. The Heels now have a dominant defense, capable of diffusing every threat. And for the first time, they could look the mighty Seminole straight in the eye and not blink. All-American quarterback Dre Bly fears no one and would love Florida State to try their luck on his side of the field. 
feel the electricity. Keenan Stadium, the town of Chapel Hill, the entire state of North Carolina is ready for this moment. The Seminoles have come to town to face the Tar Heels, and the conference, the top five, and the national championship hopes all are at stake. basketball game this afternoon many of these students didn't go so they could stand in line and be one of the first to arrive for what is looking like the night for Mac and not for Dean here in Chapel Hill North Carolina hi everybody Ron Franklin along with Mike Godfrey and welcome once again to Saturday night primetime college football and this Saturday they're calling it judgment day well folks there's no time to repent become a good guy now if you haven't done your homework and gotten prepared then it's way too late Mike, the work phrase this week has been Florida State has been there, North Carolina has not. How do you retort that? Different time, different team. And, Ron, make no mistake about this. This North Carolina team is good enough athletically to win this football game. All right, then, if North Carolina is going to burst the bubble and they're going to defeat Florida State, how do they do it? Several different keys, but one is they've got to pressure Thad Busby, the Florida State quarterback. they got to knock him down. they got to get him to throw quick, throw high, throw low, and to throw interceptions. And if they can do that, then on the other side, the running game. Jonathan Linton, they got a big back that they can run right at Florida State's defensive line, keep Andre Wadsworth uh, very, very uh, slow down. Mike, if I had to say there's an X factor in this football game, Travis Miner, the running back for Florida State, if he should get away tonight and have a good evening of running the football, to me, that changes the entire complexion of this football game. Without a doubt, I agree with you. Six touchdowns in two games for Travis Miner. And if he gets off like he did against Virginia in the first play, then that forces the defensive coordinator not to worry so much about the passing game. Then you have to worry about both dimensions, the run and the pass. Bobby Bowden, it is his birthday today. And his 68th birthday, certainly the best present that he could have would be to get this victory, which would be number 206 tonight. Across the field, Mack Brown. His first two years, he won a total of two ball games. In the last two years, he's only lost two ball games. And now the opportunity is here for his football team to stand tall and say, we have arrived not only in the conference, but to the nation temperature tonight it's going to be very cool 49 it will drop down into the low 40s humidity at 80 percent the wind not much of a factor right now five to ten miles an hour and there is a light drizzle beginning to fall here at the stadium North Carolina won the toss. They have deferred so they can have the ball in the second half. Florida State receives and will defend the East goal as you look at the two deep men for the Florida State Seminoles. This one is underway. Cold. Cold will not make the 15-yard line. And let's check in on the sideline with Adrian Karsten. Adrian. Ron, thanks very much. Now, I have learned that over the past two or three days, key members of the Florida State Seminole football team have been suffering from the flu, including quarterback Thad Busby, linebacker Daryl Bush, and even Andre Wadsworth. And furthermore, they spent over an hour on the team plane yesterday with the rest of the travel squad while breathing the same potentially contagious air. Now, remnants or onset of the flu may not show up early in this game, but as it wears on, if they're feeling fatigued, it may affect the way they play, Ron. We'll keep an eye. 
First down from the 15. Minor hit at the line of scrimmage. Bonnie Holiday, number 90, one of the first men along with Pringley, there to make the stop for Carolina. And this is the way Florida State scrimmages. Busby at quarterback. Minor, the young man who just carried, very important tonight. Outstanding group of wide receivers. They go seven deep. And also Melvin Pearsall, the tight end, uh, outstanding out of Lake Wales, Florida. This is not a great Florida State offensive line. In fact, they have two redshirt freshmen who start. Brannon at left tackle and 78 Donald Haven, 6'5", 305, a redshirt freshman out of Miami. Shotgun formation, first pass of the night. Will it be? Yes. Throws it into the turf. Incomplete because of the pressure by Keith Newman. And quickly, this is what the defense looks like. Greg Ellis at left defensive end, named one of the four finalists for the Lombardi Award tonight. Holiday and Davis have got to get pressure up the middle. Linebacking core, Newman, Mays, and Simmons, maybe the best in the country as a tandem. And Williams and Bly, the two corners, they will bump and run with Florida State all night long. That's a key. Third down. Line to make is out at the 25. They go with a running play. Davis is there to stuff it up. And this crowd has gone absolutely berserk on three and out by the defense. Ron, a good series by North Carolina's defense. Now they'll go after the punt. With North Carolina on defense, they'll go after every one of Florida State's punts tonight. They'll try to block them. Cattrall is a freshman. Carolina has said they want to make him act like a freshman. And they get pressure, but he gets it away. And it hits a Florida State player on the fly and took a big North Carolina bounce inside the 35-yard line. I'm not sure I've ever seen that. We're going to see that, Ron. Put pressure, North Carolina pressure in the Florida State kick. The gunner, the outside man going down the field, hit on the back. And North Carolina has great field position to open this football game. Hit him right in the head. Hit him in the back of the head, so it's only 23 yards on the punt. And you could see Florida State getting on the football just as quickly as they could. Jermaine Stringer. Yep, number 86. Sophomore out of Atlanta. As you look at Davenport, who opens at quarterback. And he takes over with outstanding field position. There are his numbers. Seven touchdowns, two picks. Both of them came in their last game against Georgia Tech. Got a throw in first down. Quick pass almost intercepted over the middle by Lamont Green. So here's the way they start the Tar Heels of North Carolina. Davenport, Dyer primarily a blocker. He's an outstanding one. Jonathan Linton, he is the guy you got to watch tonight. Can they run the football? He will be the difference. L.C. Stevens and Nate Brown, outstanding wide receivers. L.C. did not have a good game last year against Florida State. Crumbler, outstanding tight end. Not a great offensive line for North Carolina either, but right in the middle, Jeff Saturday, even if he didn't play for Carolina, he would have a blue collar. He is a throwback. Coaches love Saturday. Running play, this is Linton. Three yards, now four. He will take it to the 31, and it's going to be a third down at about six as Shevin Smith comes up to make the tackle. Spires, Johnson, Julian Pittman starts tonight, and Andre Wadsworth, also one of the Lombardi finalists. Howard Bush and Green, outstanding linebackers for Florida State. And in the secondary, they've been picked on a little bit this year. Roll and Cody, well, they have uh, some work ahead of them tonight. Shevin Smith, just like another linebacker, will call number 30's name a lot this evening. Third down, want to throw. Sets in the pocket, hit, ball is loose. No signal of an incomplete pass, and Florida State has the football. It was lateral back and picked up again by the Seminoles, and this is Dexter Jackson heading toward the end zone. There was a flag down back at the 47-yard line. Looks like Greg Spires in there with a good rush. So the lateral was illegal, but it will be Florida State football from what the signal has been given. Greg Spires made the tackle for Florida State. On the 
recovering team. Five yards from the spot of the foul. First down. I believe it's going to be Greg Spires. Oscar Davenport getting set up. Oh, his arm was very close to going forward, Mike. Good hit. Here's the lateral by Andre Wadsworth to Dexter Jackson coming back. But a signal for Florida State's defense putting pressure on Oscar Davenport. That's not what North Carolina wanted in the first series. They wanted to get Oscar off and comfortable. So, crowd has calmed down just a little bit, and the Seminoles will go on offense. From the 42-yard line, Busby again from the shotgun. Sets deep in the pocket, going to go out in the flat, throws it complete. Simmons is right there defensively, and he will just eat up Travis Miner. Now, here's one of the areas, Mike, that you talked about, the speed of the linebackers and Miner having trouble outrunning Simpson. They, they have excellent speed at the linebackers, and when you look at the, what it looks like, they're taking a linebacker and putting him on Travis Miner on every pass play to make sure that he doesn't get a Ward Dunn play out there outside and then runs it for 80 yards. So it's going to be second down. That's a loss of about a half yard in the play. One turnover in the ball game. Seminoles benefit from it, but that pass right there to Warwick thrown behind him, and Busby rushed a little bit in the pocket. Well, this is different than, than any time Florida State's ever seen another defense because all of a sudden they're bumping the wide receivers. Now they're trying to knock them off their path so that Thad Busby has to wait a little bit longer to throw that ball. So the key is for that offensive line inside, particularly the tackles, they gotta they got to protect, Ron, because the receiver's going to take longer to get open. Third down. Line to make is the 47 and a half of North Carolina. Busby calls him set. Here comes the pressure. Blitz up the middle. Pass is caught at the 41-yard line of North Carolina. That's good to E.G. Green, and he was tackled immediately by Omar Brown. Robert Williams falls down on this play, number 29. He's in pretty good shape right here and as he starts back gets on the hip slips a little bit there and, and the safety didn't come up fast enough on eg green good completion by thad busby so the ball first and ten at the carolina 41 yard line to play good for 17. Busby looks at a blitz, gets the pass away, and what have they thrown in again? Busby gets punished on the play. Simmons came through and hit him and knocked him to the ground. So the chess match continues and the body punches continue as far as the linebackers and the interior linemen beating on quarterbacks well, already. You're seeing a lot of hands. The defensive uh, corners putting hands on the Florida State receivers, trying to jam them at the line of scrimmage. No score if you just joined us. A fumble by North Carolina. They had it in Florida State territory. So the Seminoles have it back. Second possession by them. Quick pass. That one is off the mark. Pearsall, the intended receiver. Williams, the man covering on the play. Now what Florida State's trying to do, Ron, is go to the no huddle. Speed it up maybe a little bit more to keep North Carolina from getting the extra DB into the into the game. Having Maybe give them a little bit of problems getting their signals in also. Well, you see the numbers last year. Third down conversions, only one of 12 in this ballgame. Tonight, they're one of two. Busby sets, good protection, drills it over the middle. It is intercepted by North Carolina. That's Omar Brown. So let's take a break. Stadium clock shows 11.05. Left to play opening quarter. No score. Jim Harbaugh and Jay Lewenberg for 1-800-COLLECT. Jim, next time you call me collect, call me 1-800-COLLECT. Jay, give it a rest. No, 1-800-COLLECT is 10 cents a minute every evening all week long. Yeah, are we going to practice or what? <laughs> Think Jim's learned his lesson? One more play ought to do it. 1-800-COLLECT. 10 cents a minute every evening all week long. Running low on energy. 
energy. Satisfy your hunger for hours with a delicious all-natural snack. Balanced Nutrition Bars in a variety of great flavors. How do you get this equipment to these troops when there's a river between them? Build a bridge. Problem solving. You need it now in college. Learn it now in the Army Reserve. It is 180 degrees from expected. It is a leather-trimmed interior, available heated front seats, and an Infinity 10-speaker audio system. The new Chrysler Town & Country LXI. Built on the belief that great cars appeal to a more passionate side. And now, it's available with $1,000 cash back or a very special low lease rate. Chrysler, engineered to be great cars. ESPN's presentation of college football, Florida State versus North Carolina, is brought to you by the United States Army Reserve. Be all you can be. For more information, call 1-800-USA-ARMY. And by Chrysler, engineered to be great cars. No score. Second offensive possession by Carolina. Bobby Bowden said yesterday there ain't going to be any long drives in this football game, and that's an exact quote. He said both defenses are too much alike. They're both very, very good. Davenport possibly with an audible, a very long count as he goes under center. Ball just across the 20. And it's an option play. Lincoln turns it up, puts the head down, and it's going to have about five yards. Mike? And the interception, when you have bump and run coverage at the line of scrimmage, there's a couple different ways you can play it in the secondary. Now, this is a two-deep look with Omar Brown sitting back, waiting on the two receivers to come down the field, being jammed by the corners. Omar Brown with a big interception. Mike, let me ask you about that last play. We see an option early here. I don't think we'll see that often, but that's a message sender, isn't that's it? That's trying to control Andre Wadsworth and defensive ends, trying to show them enough to slow them down in the pass rush. Second down to five, pumped it to the sides, middle screen, great defensive play. As soon as Barnes made the catch, Tay Cody was right there to just interrupt the entire thing. And he'll knock him down for a two-yard loss. And going back to the option play, the play before, Ron, uh, if you look at the North Carolina State, uh, Florida State film, North Carolina State had success against Florida State with the option, so North Carolina stole it off of him. Mac Brown looks on at his ball club trying to convert a third down situation. They have a third down, and they need to take the ball to the Rome 31-yard line. Oscar Davenport, a junior from St. Petersburg, Florida, 6'4", 195. Sets deep in the pocket. Loss puts air into this one, and it's going to be intercepted by a Shevin Smith. So, interception and then another interception picked off this time by Florida State back at the 42-yard line, and Davenport a little ill-advised on that. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is be third long against Florida State because if you've got to throw the ball, you're in trouble. Oscar Davenport is better when he's short yardage situation and first down throwing the football. Here, an ill-advised throw here. He's going to try to get the ball to L.C. Stevens deep. But Shevin Smith, the walk-on free safety, who now earned a scholarship, picks it off. And Florida State has decent field position on their 43. You know, it comes down to that thing of a punt is really not that bad a play. No, it's, it's really not. <laughs> but uh, they didn't have any chance to complete that pass. So again, Florida State takes the ball beyond their own 40-yard line. But the running play, not going to be much as Ellis steps up and makes the hit on Travis Minor. Maybe a gain of one. You know, Shevin didn't score in that last game we had a couple of weeks ago against Virginia, but in two games prior to that, one was a, a blocked punt, and the other on an interception he had scored in two games in a row on ESPN. Well, both safeties were sitting back in coverage, in too deep coverage, Omar Brown for North Carolina. And as you look at the graphic, I think this is really big tonight. I think they have to intercept that Busby at least three, four times to have any chance to win this football game. Coach Bowden has changed again. They've gone to a huddle and an eye formation, Mike. They get more protection out of the eye. Boy, Busby gets punished as the pass is incomplete. And I mean Pringley really took him down hard. 
Ron, the whole key, another key defensively is to hit the quarterback tonight. Florida State does such a great job of knocking the other quarterback down. Well, you see North Carolina doing the same thing. Ellison Pringley punishing Thad Busby on every pass play. Here's receiver Peter Warwick trying to get open. Good tight coverage by North Carolina. The numbers on Busby so far, two of eight, one interception and 16 yards. And you would have to say the bump and run coverage is giving him a little bit of a problem. Third down, line to make the Carolina, 47 and a half. Gets his pass away, one-on-one -on -one coverage. Defender fell down, and it's incomplete as the ball is overthrown. Florida State bench wants pass interference called, but there will be none. Lavernus calls the intended receiver for the Seminoles. And what you do is you go to the third receiver, Lavernus Coles against the safety. Reggie Love, he's a backup corner, so they like that matchup because they can't have success right now with Dre Bly. And three so look for that, Ron. Now the third receiver against the third defensive back. Offensive holding. The penalty is declined, so they'll have to punt as Dre Bly goes back deep. And again, let's watch and see if North Carolina comes after the punter, Cottrell. His first kick good for 23 yards. to the outside, gets all he can get and steps out of bounds at the 33-yard line. So it is 35 on the kick and 11 on the return and there's a timeout on the field with 8.34 remaining first quarter. No score, Florida State, North Carolina. Matt Busby standing on the sideline. We were just commenting on the fact that he looks so very calm. Ron, he does, but his heart is pumping inside that jersey. Now look at the, the drives right here. Three plays, minus nine and a fumble. Carolina, their own 21, three and the interception. So already three turnovers. A slow starting football team as you look. Florida State, 104 points in the first quarter of North Carolina. Slow starting all year. This is Lent. Left side, lost his footing. Went down, nobody really touched him. Corey Simon was the closest guy to him, but he just slipped and fell down. It's going to be a couple of yard loss. Ron, I just noticed on that play, they're having a tough time with Julian Pittman. Uh, he is just uh, making a difference inside at the tackle spot for Florida State. Second down at 11. Still no score. Clock about to go under eight minutes to play opening quarter. Running play again. Linton breaks one tackle, takes it across the 35, and he's out to the 36. Daryl Bush tripped him up, and again, it's going to be third down and long for North Carolina. And an interesting number is it, it's, what, 50-50 as far as zone and man coverage as far as the Seminoles in third and long situations. It really is, and I think that the matchup that's best for North Carolina on third down is Algie Crump with a tight end because what they'll try to do is get him on a linebacker. So let's look and see if number 82 is, in fact, involved in this play. He is at the top of your screen. Goes to pass, thrown behind, almost intercepted by Roll. Ball was thrown behind the intended receiver, Octavius Barnes, and Samari Roll almost came up with the third turnover. Yeah, and this is not how Mac Brown and Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator, wanted to start off with Oscar Davenport. They wanted to give him some quick passes where he could get some confidence. And you can see he's clearly thrown behind his receivers. And you're right, it should have been intercepted by Samari Roll. Dee Feaster is back deep. That's the key right here for North Carolina. They do not want to kick the Dee Feaster. They need good coverage. Eight-man rush at the line of scrimmage. Let's see if they come after it. Yep, they got the pressure on, but plenty of time to kick off the side of his foot. Very poor kick, and it's going to take a Florida State bounce and is rolling back to the 45-yard line. So Brian Schmitz with not a good punt. That one is going to be a total of only 19 yards. 
with college football next Saturday night on ESPN. A special time, 5.50 Eastern. Damian Craig and the 17th ranked Auburn Tigers taking on Robert Edwards and the number nine Georgia Bulldogs. It's between the hedges next Saturday night on ESPN primetime. Ron, you can't keep giving Florida State good field position like this. And North Carolina has lost the field position battle here in the first quarter. You see the quick adjustment defensively by Carolina as they jump into the gap. Busby gets his pass away, man on man coverage, and he breaks the tackle. 45 down to the 40 into the 37 yard line as Williams and Brown combine on the tackle. But Peter Warwick showing you just how quick he is. Ron, good move by Mark Rick, the offensive coordinator, because when you're facing bump and run coverage, all of a sudden, if you get some movement in your wide receiver in motion, you get him away from that corner a little bit. So see, now you. You see the motion, now the cushion a little bit as he goes upfield. And Peter Warwick, that got him off the line of scrimmage cleanly. So Mike, they scrimmage at the 38-yard line. Shotgun formation again. Carolina shows blitz. They come in the middle. Quick pass is thrown complete at the 32. Reggie Love is there defensively to make the tackle on the Vernus Coles. There's Mark Rick, second from the right. They're working on that third wide receiver. In other words, if you can't beat Robert Williams and Dre Bly, go after the third guy. That's Reggie Love. He's a backup safety. He's a backup corner. And they're working Lavernius Coles against him. Three wide receivers. It's Damian Harrell, number eight to the top of your screen. That's the route right there. That's the combination right here. They go with the running play. Travis Miner back into the boundary. Tries to break a tackle, and he's going to have the first down. Kay Mays makes the tackle, and let's go downstairs and check with Adrian Karsten. Adrian? Ron, so far in the ball game, Bobby Bowden has been very displeased with the pace of his offense. Not so much the speed at which they're running, but they're running the play clock down within five, six seconds sometimes. And so far in three or four possessions, they already have ten plays with no gain or sometimes less. He feels because they're all guessing by the time they get up to the line of scrimmage. Guys to crank up the pace get up to the line sooner let's get that ball snapped with 10 seconds or more left in the play clock first and 10 line of scrimmage is the 28 of north carolina no score clock about the run under five minutes left and you see the play clock down to two just as adrian was talking about right up in the middle got him open first down at the 11 yard line as damian harold that third receiver got loose yeah they really are working on reggie love right now that's their key right now they're going against reggie love the backup he tried to hold on to damian harold but damian harold came free and that's the matchup that they, they found right now in this ball game well they picked him with the pearsall the tight end and that's what got him uh, off stride and behind in the play that's, First the, down. that's the respect they have for dre Bly and robert williams three wide receivers and now they got coles back in against him you see Stepping up in the middle. They go with a handoff. Minor right side inside the 10. He's going to have about fours. Greg Williams comes up to make the hit on Travis Minor. Travis is only 190 pounds, but as you can see, waits for his blockers and has learned very quickly not to give away his body until he has to. Well, coaches, when you talk to Mark Rick, he said he doesn't make mistakes talking about Travis Minor, USA Today's Player of the Year in high school. A success for Florida State inside the 20. Second down. Ball is resting at the Carolina nine. That's Warwick in motion. Short drop to throw. Puts the ball up and he misses that one completely. E.J. Green. E.G. thought they were running a completely different route. Closest guy to it was uh, Dre Bly. Well, Dre Bly had great coverage on E.G. Green. Again, trying to motion him, trying to move him around to get him free. Good coverage by Dre Bly. Ball thrown poorly. Oh. Dre Bly saw that the ball was going to be thrown inside. Neither quarterback has been overly sharp early. No, they haven't. But you've got to give the edge to Florida State because they've won the field position battle at this point. It's third down. To pick up the first, they have to take it to the Carolina two. There's a look at Warren. Fake the running play right up in the middle. Touchdown. He's got the tight end, Melvin Pearsall.
Isn't it interesting on this drive that Melvin Pierce saw the tight end wide open. Omar Brown too far back on him. But they used Melvin Pierce all on the backup wide receivers of Ernest Coles and Harrell. So you got to credit Mark Rick and Bobby Bottom for good strategy finding the open man. Sebastian Janikowski, the freshman out of Daytona, kicks the extra point. That, by the way, for Pierce all is his first touchdown in 1997. Let's take a break. Four minutes even remaining. Opening quarter. The Seminoles have jumped on top. Seven to nothing. Florida State goes on top first in this ball game. We talked about the standing room only crowd. Folks, take a look up here in the press box. Rick Brewer, the sports information director here in North Carolina, has had a devil of a time. You'll see people sitting in stools behind that front row. Those folks are normally not there. But Rick gave out 510 total passes, 218 working press. You can tell they're working. 116 photo, that's television, still, magazine, what have you. Three radio networks are here, and however many our people walked off with. So, that's a total of 510 at this ballgame, far and away the largest number of press passes ever given out here at Keenan Stadium for a football game. They need a lot of food up there. This kick being taken at the 6. This is Parquet. Gets it back outside at the 20, and then he will be stopped. Excellent play by the special teams of Florida State. And let's check in with Carl Ravage. Carl? Hi, Ron. Let's quickly recap what transpired on Judgment Day. A miraculous play forced overtime for Nebraska and Missouri. And Scott Frost does the rest. Touchdown run for the quarterback. Nebraska survives 45-38. Earlier, Michigan routed Penn State. 34 to 8. The debate as to who's number one can begin. Okay. Mike, to me, the interesting play in the ballgame was the tying touchdown by Nebraska. If I didn't know better, I should thought the kid kicked the ball on purpose. That's a dead ball. That's well, no play. I think you'll find Michigan will probably hurdle Nebraska now yep. and all the way to number one. Yep, they sure will. Depending on this ball game. Oscar Davenport and company trading for the first time. Pressure on him, and he's got to be sacked. Back inside the 20-yard line. Pressure coming from Johnson and Julian Pittman. Also, Darrell Bush in on the stop. Well, we, we chronicled how North Carolina starts slow. All year, the first quarter has not been their quarter, but you cannot fall behind uh, this club. That's now, right. You, you, 15 touchdowns first quarter for Florida State. North Carolina has had one. And it, when you figure they're 8-0, that seems impossible almost. We've only scored one touchdown first quarter all year long. But boy, Mike, your point is so well taken. They look a little nervous on offense. They're just not settled down. Play action. There's the quick look in pass. And that's the kind of thing we thought we would see early as the pass is thrown complete to Nay Brown. And they're going to have a third down and still about six, six and a half yards to pick up the first down. Mac Brown, the head coach, said when someone asked him about his problems in the first quarter, he said, I think I'll take him out and scrimmage him for 90 minutes before we come to the stadium tonight. But uh, <laughs> they have not settled down on offense. Well, he also asked him, you know, if, does, does Kelbor, how soon does he play? And he said, I will sit Davenport down a couple of times and calm him down before that happens. We have to have confidence in Davenport. Line to make the 32. Sets deep in the pocket, under pressure, gets the pass away, and it is very fortunate not to have been intercepted, and a flag comes from deep downfield. As Davenport was being hit, delivered the pass to Stevens anyway, and he's fortunate it wasn't picked off for a touchdown. He just lobbed it out there, but I think they're going to pick up an in, in uh, interference call. Holding. Tay Cody, number 27. Mickey Andrews, the defensive coordinator. Uh, and he's going to follow that official up the field <laughs> <laughs> with his headset in hand. Oscar Davenport really doesn't throw this ball well. Gets bumped by his tackle. And there's the completion of the play to L.C. Stevens. Here's Wadsworth going inside. But good job by the offensive line. Mike Gimble, number 76, picking up Andre Wadsworth. That's the initial first down of the night for North Carolina at the 2-minute, 15-second mark of the opening quarter. And there you see the numbers. Minus five rushing, seven passing total for the Tar Heels. 
Florida State crowds the line of scrimmage again. They stay at home because here comes a running play, but Linton going to take him out for about five, maybe six yards, and Dyer, some kind of block by the fullback to clear the linebacker out of the way. Well, Deion Dyer is an excellent fullback. When you talk to the coaches, they just praise him. They say a Moose Johnson type just loves to block, will knock you all around against Virginia, put 13 different defensive players on the ground. Trey Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator, said he was 13 for 13 in that ball game, 100% on his blocks. Second down, about four and a half. But Carolina has not had much of this this evening. Linton again, penetration, and going to be knocked out as Jerry Johnson got the penetration. And now it's going to be third down and long again. And Johnson just beat his man and was standing there waiting for the handoff. It looks like Florida State's looking at Jonathan Linton lined up real deep at eight yards and just getting a good charge out of the defensive line, getting penetration. So the Seminoles bring in the extra defensive back. It is third down. At this time, Carolina needs to take it to the 46-yard line. Under one minute to play, first quarter. They better do a good job on Andre Wadsworth here. He's one-on-one -on, -one on the offensive tackle. And there he comes, Mike. Just what you're talking about. Disrupted the play, and he throws it high. Well, you were right on with the call because Wadsworth beat his man and beat him badly, didn't tackle the quarterback, but he made him throw quickly and high. Yeah, when you get in a situation on third down long, there's just no way you can help because you need to get four or five receivers out in the ballgame. In 85, Andre Wadsworth is probably the best defensive lineman in the country, and you don't want to leave him singled up too much. That was Baxter who was trying desperately to get to him. First punt of the night here by Schmitz was good for 20 yards. Gets a good pass, pressure from the outside, and they better kick this time. A driving spiral, Warwick with a fair catch called for and made back at the 16-yard line. And let's check in again with Adrian Karsten. Adrian. Well, Ron, you told me how crowded it is up in the press box. Well, I may have the last standing room only seat left here in Keenan Stadium. They've never had this many people in here before. Behind me, we've always seen students on the grass area. But up above that, there's another 1,600 students standing, sitting, who have never been in here before. And on the other side, another 3,200 paying students. Our guess is somewhere close to 62,000. But how would have you like to have been the guy who said, we're cutting it off here? No, you can't cannot come in, you would be 62,001. That was 62,002. Burt got in, and uh, he's got a, an SRO uh, he got one of the Lee, He got one of Lee Corso's passes. They played together. They fake the running play, and they throw to the man coming out of the backfield, and Simmons is there just to devour the play. Good concept, but McCray looked up and said, this 41's not supposed to be here. Didn't it work this way in yeah. practice? Carl Torbush, who's the defensive coordinator, said he's the best I've ever coached, and that says a lot. 81 tackles going into this ball game tonight. Here's Carl writing down the play of Florida State and what defense they were in. So it's a gain of one on the play. It'll be second down and 10, and that is the end of the first quarter. So there's a timeout on the field with our score, Florida State 7 and North Carolina nothing. We'll take a break. We'll be back in 90. Well, we played 15 minutes. Florida State scored the only touchdown, and they went to Melvin Pearsall. They're tied in, and that's how we stand as we head into the second 15 minute. Look at this. Two former Seminoles right there. Burt Reynolds, of course, on the left. And uh, we had the mics open at the time, and we heard him walk up to Lee and say, Hey, Chris, how are you? <laughs> no, actually, they were roommates in college. They know each other uh, very well. Lee stole him 100 from back in uh, college days. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably just the tip of the iceberg. Florida State taking over with one of their poorest field positions. They fake play action. Busby running for his life and gets it away to nobody. Just throws it away. A great coverage by North Carolina on that play. Robert Williams, 29. Dre Bly, 31. Ron, so far in the first quarter, they have held up. 
the problem has been the third receiver for Florida State coming on and getting the some of the safeties and some of the backup corners in progression. Which is exactly the point you made on our cut-in earlier today on game day, talking about you thought that would be the most important person in this game. I think you're going to try that. You're going to see more and more of that. You're going to see more and more of Pearsall. The numbers on Busby, 7 of 16, one pick, 64 yards and a touchdown. Coles is in the ball game again, number 7. Working against Reggie Love. Third down line to make to 27. He pumped. They try to go a stop and go. And there's the pressure. And they're going to call defensive holding. Deep downfield, there came a flag well after the play had been overthrown. Well, it's no secret, Ron. They're going after Reggie Love with the third receiver. Holding on the offense. Pass interference on the defense. Penalties offset. Replay third down. So offsetting penalties, as you could hear, offensive holding. We didn't see that flag. It was back among the bodies that were on the ground at the 12-yard line. Here's the adjustment right here. Now you got Blind Williams right here, but now you all of a sudden you get a third receiver, Lavernius Coles, in the ball game going against Reggie Love. Little pump fake out there, and you see the good coverage by Blind Williams. And not bad by Reggie Love, except he used his hands. Third down. And confusion on the part of Florida State, and they call a timeout. Do they have 12 in the field? Well, let's take a break. We'll look it over. 14.47 left until halftime. We'll be right back. presentation of college football Florida State versus North Carolina is brought to you by the 1997 Pontiac Bonneville luxury with attitude well what you're looking at is Franklin Street in downtown Chapel Hill no relation uh, thank you nice place to hang out just north side of the campus it's been a very busy street the last three days and part of the new structure here at uh, Chapel Hill the athletic facility seven to nothing Florida State leads they called the timeout a moment ago, and now they have it third down, and they need to take it to their own 27. Busby sets deep. Good protection, got his pass away, has it complete. You can see the defensive back fell down, and it is going to be a first down out at the 31-yard line. Travis Miner, the running back. Young running back is going to sit in here now to try to help with pass protection for Thad Busby. Get a little late blitz. Steps out on the outside backer, K. Mays. Peter Warwick on completion. Boys, well, you could see Busby really took a shot after the pass was delivered, but he's okay. Two catches for Warwick for 29 yards. Comes the blitz again. Busby's pass thrown low. Did he catch it? Yes. Going to be good for a gain of one to the 32. And it was Kay Mays who was coming on the blitz, number 53. Good pressure again by Kay Mays. And a little bit of a problem that North Carolina is having right now. They'd like to get to Thad Busby with their down four. This is a zone blitz right here. They brought out uh, one of the defensive linemen, Russell Davis. So a little zone blitz there. So a little different defense on that play. Clock runs, 13 minutes, 45 seconds. Left to play in his opening half. Florida State, 7, North Carolina nothing. Blitz again. Pass right over the middle. As it complete, this is Lavernus Coles, and it'll be another first down for Florida State. And the, the Seminole offense really seems as though with every series a little more in sync which is just the opposite of what North Carolina has seen. Keep working this area right here. Lavernus Coles, number seven, with the catch. Little slant. Ball thrown right on time against Robert Williams. First down, Seminoles. The ball just across the 45-yard line. Pressure up the middle, got his pass away, and caught it, but caught it out of bounds. 
Reggie Love with the cover on the play. Reggie's got to be winded, and we're not even midway of the second quarter. Well, they're, they're make no mistake about it now. They, they have drawn a bullseye on number 24, and that, that, that's it right there. There's a bullseye on him. Thad Busby is working against Reggie Love because they're in a position where they've got the two best corners to the two-receiver side, so Reggie Love has to hold up, and they're sending two receivers at him. Laverne is closed, and they'll replace him with Damian Harrell. Warwick and E.G. Green go to the left. And there's a look at Love working man-on-man -on -man against Terrell. Bottom of your screen. But here's a running play. Travis Miner turns it up. 50, 45, puts a hip down, and he gets slammed to the turf by Omar Brown. But that is enough for the Florida State first down. And it was Jason Whitaker, if you could see, 78, with a good block on the play. He made, Jason Whitaker made the block that opens this play up because now with the passing game working the linebackers have to respect the pass and all of a sudden they fake the throw get the draw to travis minor guards are downfield on you chopping k Mays. this is a good drive by florida state but you have to say this has been a very patient patient drive by the seminoles look at the first downs eight to one Play action, got the pass away. E.G. Green, the intended receiver, and holding on was Robert Williams. Good pressure again by Greg Ellis. ESPN College Football coming again this Thursday night weekend kickoff show at 7.30 Eastern. Then it's a visit to Conference USA. The Cincinnati Bearcats hook up with the East Carolina Pirates from down the road in Greenville, North Carolina. Thursday night right here on ESPN. <laughs> Brown paces the sideline. His club offensively, as you could see by those numbers just a moment ago, they have only one first down. Meanwhile, it has been the Seminoles maintaining ball control. Busby pumps once, goes on top, got a man. Did he catch it inbounds? Nope, stepped out of bounds to make the reception. Peter Warwick waiting on the football and just a tad overthrown. The Warwick and E.G. Green, two great big play receivers working against Dre Bly. Just trying to work on a Canadian football field a little wider. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, though, he had lost the defensive back. Good heat on uh, Thad Busby again by Mike Pringley, number 91. They're knocking him down. That's what they want to do. Third big, down. Big third down, Ron, as you say, right here. Line to make is the 33 of Carolina. Nine knockdowns. They haven't sacked him tonight, but nine times he's been knocked down. Flags are down. There was movement, and he got hit again. And now another flag. And the official's going to call him to, uh, as a late hit, but I don't know if you can hear that. Brian Simmons came in hard, and uh, he can't hear the whistle. But you got to almost pick that flag up. a good officiating group. Referees Terry McCauley. We've got a, a experienced group here tonight. I think they pick it up now. What do you think? Well, I definitely do because I, it was obvious that Simmons couldn't hear it. I don't I think that he would just you know, know that the whistle had blown and, uh, and intentionally knock him down. And I think Florida State may have moved early on this they play. They did. They did. The left guard looked as though he came out of a stance. Farther snap. Ball start on the offense. There's no foul. There's no foul for a personal foul. The player could not hear the whistle. Well, I said, an excellent group. See, Bobby's proving the point. He's saying, what did he say? Bobby couldn't hear him either. No. Just like the kid. I don't think Simmons could hear the whistle. No, there's, there's movement on the play, and then Simmons, Brian Simmons, 41, just going to come in, and even if he did hear the whistle, it's not a bad idea. Just give him a little bump. Let him know you're here. He tried to grab a hold of him here to stop him from going through. So, five yards stepped off of the play. It is third down, and the line to make is the 33. Tonight, 50%. Third down conversions for the Seminoles. Ron, here's Harrell right here, and that matchup that they like. Let's we'll see if they go back to him against Reggie Love. 
Blitz from the outside. Florida State picks it up, and that's where they go. But they got the one-on-one -on -one coverage, and it's knocked away by Love. Excellent play by Reggie Love. He's going to need oxygen at halftime, but a nice play on that throw to Damian Harrell. Damian Harrell alternating with Lavernius Coles, just trying to go downtown to beat Reggie Love. Able to deflect the ball. Big stop for North Carolina. Pressure on the punter. They get it away. Wobbly kick. Dre Bly has it rolled past him, and it goes into the end zone. It goes into the end zone for a touchback. 48 yards on the punt, and it came very close to hitting the official. Timeout in the field. 7-0 Florida State. Florida State on top, 7-0 for the third straight year. Now Burger King will recognize outstanding student athletes through the $1 million Burger King College Football Scholarship Program. Tonight's Burger King students of the game are from Florida State. Defensive end Andre Wadsworth, a graduated senior with a degree in athletic administration. He's now enrolled in grad school. And from North Carolina, senior center Jeff Saturday with a 2-8 grade point average in the School of Business. Two excellent players right there, Ron. Saturday on offense and Wadsworth on defense. And in case you joined us late, I mentioned that Wadsworth named one of the four finalists for the Lombardi Award. Davenport under pressure, and that is a great job by the man we're just talking about. Wadsworth stayed right at home and just decked him. Did not buy the fake or anything else. Came into this, uh, this game tonight with 10 sacks. He's a former 6 foot 1, 220. Linebacker out of high school that was walked on at Florida State. And now he's walking on people. <laughs> they have not controlled him. They're trying to do different things to him, keeping the tight end, chop blocking, but they haven't been able to stop him tonight. Andre Wadsworth, he has been a difference maker. Here's the running play. Lenton will take it across the 20. Lamont Green is there to put the stop on Jonathan. You know, we talked today about the, the type of offense that North Carolina has. They're, they're like the mice chewing at the cheese. They, they can't get big ball, big gulps of it. They, they're a methodical offense that has to take a lot of plays to get down the field. They don't get many big plays. So that's the reason, as we talked about off the top of the telecast, that it is imperative that number 27, Linton, carry the ball a lot tonight and have some effect with it. But right now, it's third down and 10. Davenport tripped up and he will be sacked. Johnson fell on him, but it was Wadsworth who tripped him up and injured on the play Ryan Hoffman. The left tackle for North Carolina is hobbling off the field at the 23-yard line. And you don't control Andre Wadsworth. He controls you. Just getting a hand on Oscar Davenport. He played inside last year. Now they moved him outside. Brian Schmitz waits for the kick back at his five and a half yard line. Seminoles lead it seven to nothing. They have a nine man rush at the line of scrimmage. Gets his kick away. Not a long kick to Mrs. Warwick at the 43. Return to the open side of the field. Looks to turn the corner, and that is a nice open field tackle. Simmons, I believe, was clipped on the play yeah. and still made the tackle. They're going to pick up a, a, some, a penalty here, which will move him past the 50. Boy, good play by Simmons. 38 yards and a kick and 11 on the return. I think it's Derek Gibson, number six, that's going to be blocking on Simmons. Yep. There's the push right in the back. back. Mm -hmm. Adrian Carson, let's check in with you. Brian, before that lost offensive series, uh, Cleve Bryant, the quarterback's coach, standing right next to Mac Brown, Keldorf, and Oscar, and said, look, Oscar, if we don't get a spark from you, we're going to have to make a change. Now, to his defense, as he came off the field, Cleve said, I do know that we had a breakdown in coverage there, so we may or may not see a change in quarterback their next offensive series, but uh, he did mention them, too, uh, before the last series run. Keldorf, of course, outstanding. Last year, he broke the foot. That's what Oscar Davenport had an opportunity to come in and show what he could do. But Keldorf was just untouchable last Last year and he struggled this season. I don't think they'll pull the plug on Oscar Davenport until after the second quarter, until they go to the locker room and see, talk it over a little bit. Busby pressure on him and the pass incomplete. And let's check in. Oh no, here comes a late flag. 
hold up Carl Ravage. We'll get it right back to you. That flag thrown very late. The good call, Ron. It's it's uh, they were all of Brian Simmons was all over the back of the receiver. Melvin Pearsall. So it is going to be interference, and now let's check in with Carl Ravage. Carl? All right, Ron, good call on the delay. Here we go, Miami, Virginia Tech, the Hokies with a chance to run to an Alliance Bowl, and they're running here. Lamont Pigues, 24-13, with Syracuse narrowing, narrowly getting by BC. Big show for Virginia Tech. Well, that is big as far as the Big East is concerned. We've got Virginia Tech the day after Thanksgiving in Charlottesville, which could be <laughs> a really interesting affair. And Virginia's a fast, improving football team. Yeah, they are. First down following the penalty. Busby going to go on top. Throws it long, and it is caught out of no Lost the football. You could see the coverage that time by Robert Williams. You hear a lot about Dre Bly, but let me tell you, Robert Williams is just as good a corner as Dre Bly. Maybe a better cover corner. He's working on Peter Warwick here. Peter Warwick with an out and up, but look at the position Robert Williams is in. Knocks the ball away and again forces him outside. Robert Williams, good, good shape, sinking. And, and I think what you say, some of the coaches do feel that. It's taking nothing away from Dre Bly. Dre Bly is the big play guy. 11 interceptions last year. But Williams seems to be the steadier of the two. He's, ste he's like a blanket. He's a blanket on these receivers tonight. Busby has missed his last five passes. Second and ten. Here's the running play. Miner looks for a block. Great job defensively. He'll be strung out and dropped for a one-yard loss. It's Greg Ellis and Ebenezer Ekuban on the stop. Well, Ekuban's one they think is going to be a great one. He was a tight end, wasn't he? His second, uh, second team tight end last year, and uh, Carl Torbush said if he stays healthy, he can be as good as anybody we've had. And they compare him to Bulware. They compare him to Wadsworth and Renard Wilson that played last year. So that's pretty high company. Kevin Long, the senior out of Somerville, South Carolina, comes out of the football. It is third down, and for Florida State to keep the drive going, they have to take it to the Carolina 44. Seminoles lead it, seven to nothing. Deep in the pocket, deep over the middle, pass just a little too tall. Lavernus Coles went up for it, and I'm not so sure it didn't go through his hands. No, it's the same thing again. The third receiver, you keep talking about it, but it, Reggie Love, if North Carolina's going to win this football game, Reggie Love's going to have to play a big part tonight. Lavernus Coles again running away from Love, went right through his hands, poorly thrown off. Good series by North Carolina's defense. Just keeping them in the ball game so their offense can get going. High pass, Cottrell gets it away, and it's a line drive. This is Bly. Spins around, looks for a block, and there will be none. He will be tackled at the 21-yard line. <laughs> Some great athletes on both sides of the field, and now here comes a late flag in, and there was a push, and I couldn't tell who, if it was that first guy, and here's another flag that's been thrown. <laughs> Dre Bly pushed someone after he was down, and then there was another push. Unsportsmanlike against North Carolina. It was tough enough to move against that defense anyway. Without digging yourself a hole, you're exactly right. So now let's take a timeout. 8.25 left until halftime. Florida State 7 and North Carolina nothing. Seven to nothing, our score, Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Adrian Karsten coming to you from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. The showdown of the ACC, number five against number two. And so far in the first half, it has been all number two as the Seminoles have dominated, although they only lead seven to nothing. <laughs> Dyer in motion. They give the ball to Linton, the tailback, and Sam Coward steps up into the hole, and there is nothing. And again, Mike on first down. Carolina for the night has zero yards on first down. And, Ron, let me, let me just show you something here. When you get to the position, as deep as the tailback is, can't help but he's eight yards deep, and any time it looks like Florida State sees him at eight yards deep, they really get penetration by the linebackers. That's Sam Coward, number one. So maybe a play-action pass off of that would, would open things up a little bit. 
Now a timeout has been called with seven minutes, 53 seconds left until halftime. We'll take it with them. It's all Seminole so far. The Tar Heels have called timeout. Seven to nothing, Florida State leads. We're just talking, Mike. This this play coming up right here is really huge in this ballgame. If you look at total yards, three for Carolina, 107 for Florida State. And to only be behind 7 nothing. Here's where I think they've got involved the tight end a little bit. Algie Plumper, 82, because they've got a good match against Darrell Bush. And those linebackers set a lot deeper this time. Davenport in the pocket. Going to try to run, and he will be knocked down after a gain of a couple. Andre Wadsworth got to him. And let's check in once again with Carl Ravage. Carl? Hi, Ron. Interesting stuff in the Pac-10 with Washington losing to Oregon, number 16. Arizona and Cal, and watch the ball go down. Derek Gardner comes up with it. 71 yards later, he's at Pager. Arizona State only up 10 on Cal. Ron? So the Sun Devils, uh, after the big win last week, still up in the ball game. They've got it by 10. Our situation, 7-0. Florida State, third down and eight. And Carolina, delay a ball game. Five yards going to have to be stepped off. And Boy, Mike, offensively, this has been a nightmare. Well, that's not a good sign. Your quarterback, they were nonchalant coming up to the line of scrimmage. And I think, as I said before, I think when they get to the halftime, then they'll start talking about Chris Keldorf a little bit, the backup quarterback, because Oscar doesn't seem at this point to be totally in the ballgame. Keldorf. Waiting patiently on the sideline. The way things are going, I'd be surprised if we don't see him in that third quarter, if not sooner. They try the option. Pitch back. Ball. They are lucky. It's did good. not come loose. Florida State says they got it, but it was Lamont Green. Lamont, Lamont Green, Green who made the tackle. The ball will be placed inside the one. You just look at the offensive players, and, and they just are, are stymied at what's going on out there. You can't blame all, all on Oscar. But that was a down-the-line option play. They're lucky didn't blow up in their face. Well, Mike, the guard and Saturday both had been pushed back into him, and he should have held on to the football. That this ball could have been a free touchdown. This has been a total mismatch Florida State's defense against North Carolina's offense. They're very fortunate. Their defense has hung in there. Smith standing at the base of the end zone, and you know the rule. He cannot take a step back. Gets his kick away. Line drive, very returnable. This is Warren from the 40, 30, and down to the 28-yard line. ESPN NFL Countdown comes your way every Sunday at 11.30 Eastern. Join the distinguished faculty of Bristol University tomorrow morning for the best pregame show in the business. Then at 7 o'clock, the ultimate highlight show, NFL Primetime. It's followed by Sunday Night NFL. Take the bus to Pittsburgh as Jerome Bettis and the Steelers host the Baltimore Ravens. So the Seminoles take it over with great field position. 40 yards in the kick at 13 on the return. And here they come with a running play with Miner. And Miner inside the 20, down to the 15, and now the 14-yard line. Brian Simmons comes over to make the tackle, and that is a gain of 14 yards, and hang on if you're a Carolina fan. Omar Brown, number two, the safety, came up, had a nice shot at Travis Miner, and he, Travis Miner shows you how strong he is at 6'1", 190, because he ran right through the tackle of Omar Brown. Eight carries for 30 yards for Miner. That may not seem like something to write home about, but in this football game, where running has been basically non-existent, that's huge. And on Florida State down here in the past likes a quick post pattern. They go with the running play again, and this will gain maybe a half yard, and that's it as Russell Davis steps up to make the tackle. And the way they're spreading out North Carolina right now, you're either going to get it, you're going to get the post out of some one of these receivers. 
and they keep trying to wear down the defensive backs. Bly no and game. Williams have really held up well against E.G. Green and Peter Warwick. We haven't heard their names that much tonight. No big plays. I got a feeling they're going to work on Reggie again here with his quick post. Two wide receivers go left. That's the top of the screen. Lavernus Coles, you can see him lined up. He's at the bottom of the screen. And the shotgun, they put the ball up on top, going for the corner. Touchdown, Florida State. Touchdown, E.G. Green. And they caught it against E.G. Williams. Overall, Brown was covering. Boy, not a good sign if you're a North Carolina fan. Thad Busby threw the ball perfectly to E.G. Green. You know how you get the fade on the outside, the outside receiver? They ran the fade with the inside receiver against Robert Williams. But you can't keep putting the defense in those positions. It's the offense's fault that they have given great field position to Florida State. Extra point attempt is up, and it is good. So with four minutes and 25 seconds left until halftime, our new score the Seminoles of Florida State, the number two team in the nation, 14 at North Carolina nothing. 14 to nothing, Florida State forges on top. On Thad Busby's going to hit E.G. Green on the fade route. And you see the separation starting right here. It's a great catch by E.G. Green. Fades to the outside, one hands it back into his body. Pretty good coverage by Williams. Just kind of stopped on it a little bit. Boy, he grabbed that thing in with one hand, didn't he? really did. Thad Busby with a big pass completion. Now, Busby's an interesting story. He gets no respect whatsoever, and he's only lost one game as a starter. And right now, as you look at Davenport and also Chris Keldor from the sideline, one of these guys got to step up big time, and it better happen quickly. This kick is going to bound into the end zone, and North Carolina will take it over at the 20 as Parquet was the closest man to it, but he elected not to run it out. Because this is a series that Oscar Davenport has to get something going, Ron, or you'll face uh, maybe the hook at the halftime. We expected not a lot of big plays in this game because of the defenses, but plays over 10 yards in the ball game. Florida State has eight. North Carolina has zero. No, and then one of the receivers of the tight end, Algie Crumpler, somebody has to step up here because Linton's the type of back you need when you're in the ball game, not fighting from behind. He's a big back. He's a four or five yard at a time type back. They need a receiver to come up big here. Davenport with the shotgun. There's the quick looking pass. Got it complete. That may be the longest gainer of the night, and it is. It's good for 10 yards to Nay Brown. And no huddle by North Carolina with 4-12 on the clock. Trying to find something that will settle Oscar Davenport down. So now no huddle, open it up, spread them out. Second first out of the night. That's the first one by the offense. The other one was by penalty. Davenport drills it. Ball is tipped, and that should have been caught. Dropped by L.C. Stevens, and particularly in a ball game like this. Those kind of drops are killer. Yeah, you, you've got to make everything count against Florida State. L.C. Stevens trying to get off the ball. And again, good corner play by Tay Cody, using his hands to try to keep L.C. Stevens off his route. L.C. looked up, and the ball was there. But with the kind of pressure his quarterback's been getting, he's got to turn around and be ready. I think you go right back to L.C. Stevens. This time they roll the pocket. Davenport going to try to run. Spins and maybe has one yard, and that's it. And let's check in with Adrian Karsten. Adrian? Ron, remember right after the kickoff, I mentioned that Daryl Bush and a few other defensive leaders are having trouble fighting the flu. Well, they've been taking a lot of liquids over here and feeling like they've been on, uh, running on half a tank, but they got to thank their offense because they haven't had to play much so far, so they really don't feel as winded as they would have otherwise. And Adrian, that's a great point. And they haven't played under pressure because North Carolina hasn't challenged them on their side of the ball, on the side of the field. Dexter Jackson, you could see him fly it up with the uh, safety blitz and the whistles, and the flag came down. With the exception of uh, that first series where North Carolina got the ball deep and then turned it right over, they have had no penetration. In fact, 
They haven't come close to going no. across midfield since then. And your defense, when that happens, you don't get pressed. Front of the snap. Ball start on the offense. Five yards, third down. Mac Brown didn't expect this out of his offense. Felt like they would they could move the ball if they could establish the run with Linton, which they haven't done. So everything now is throwing. Now you play Florida State's kind of game. You're a one-dimensional team now throwing the football. It has all happened at the point of attack, and Florida State has beaten the offensive line at the point of attack. 0 for 6 on third down conversions this evening. Davenport pass. Well overthrown. And that will stop the clock. And now Florida State gets the football back. They have two timeouts left and just under three minutes to play. Well, and you can bet, and Oscar Davenport's thinking right now, he knows he's not far away from Chris Keldorf coming in the ball game. So you press a little bit to add to the situation. So Mac Brown will do a good job trying to settle him down at half. Six punt for North Carolina in the first half. And the last three have been line drive kicks. Nine-man rush for the Seminoles again. Pressure at the middle, and it's blocked. Brian Allen is the man who got through to get it. He got the block, and now the floodgates can open with two minutes and 46 seconds left in the first half of play as Florida State has it inside the 15-yard line. And again, Ronnie, it goes back to when your offense doesn't perform and you, you put your defense in a bad situation, you're kicking teams just a block punt. That was not blocked at all by North Carolina. What you mean is nobody stopped no, anybody. No, no, <laughs> It was like the floodgates. Like you talked about floodgates opening here for their offense. He's opening for the punt team. Blocked three punts in the field goal the last two games against the North Carolina special teams. Busby hands the running play. Minor hit from behind. And that's Mays who will come across to make the tackle on him. Kay Mays trying to guard against what could be devastating here. I remember last year's game, Florida State blocked three of Carolina's kicks. Two okay. blocked punts, gave the Seminoles great field position, and then they blocked the field goal attempt, stifled one of the few scoring chances for the Tar Heels all day, and that final was 13 to nothing. So they're right back where they started from last year. Ron, this defense in North Carolina has got to stand up right now, or their lights are going to be out here. They need a stop here. They need to hold in their field goal. And around. Whoa. Bonnie Holiday came up and made the tackle, and Stringer just disappeared. Let's check in with uh, Carl Ravitch. Carl? Hi, Ron. Coming up at the half, Judgment Day, of course, is going to lead to Decision Day. Who is going to be number one? Nebraska, what a fantastic finish. If you haven't seen the play, you have to come back and watch at the half. How about Michigan? Big statement today at Happy Valley. We will find out all that coming up at the half. Ron, back to you. Okay, Carl. That was Lavernus Colds on the reverse, who cut it back into the middle. And Lavernus cut it back into the big people. <laughs> Third down, line to make. They need to take it to the four. Florida State leads 14 to nothing. They're trying to blow this one open. Running play. Minor to the right. Gets one block. Waits for the block, and he will score. That was Donald Haven, and there is going to be a holding call against the Seminole. It's number 68, Jason Whitaker. Well, he did tackle the North Carolina player, and it's away from the call, Ron. And holding on the offense. Ten yards, spot on the foul. Coach Bowden was all the way out on the field in protest. Well, it, it's a definite hold, but it was way back away from where the play is going to go. You're going to see it right here. 68, Jason Whitaker tackling Bonnie Holiday. Big, big play. See it again. Right here is the hold. And a good call by the referee. So the penalty pushes it back to the 25-yard line. Third down. The line to make is the four and a half. Shotgun formation for Busby. 
Nobody in the backfield. Quarterback draw. Has five, has ten, and he goes down as Ellis got there from behind along with Brian Simmons, and they just put themselves in good field goal position. A lot closer for Sebastian Janikowski. What good call by Mark Rick and Bobby Bowden to spread everybody out. You see the motion to get K. Mays out number 53, and there's nobody in there when the backer leaves on the draw. 32-yard field goal attempt. Left footer is ready. Gets a good pass. His kick is good. So with 32 seconds showing on the stadium clock, it is Florida State 17 and a silenced North Carolina crowd and team at nothing. Mike, in a situation like this, you don't have time for emotional things in the locker room at a halftime you got to repair a lot of things that are broke and they're broke on offense well i think the first thing they have to do is decide whether they're going to bring chris keldorf back out that's going to be a conversation with greg davis the offensive coordinator mac brown he told you the other day he's going to look in the eyes of oscar davenport now you can't blame it all on oscar davenport they haven't got blocking up front they never established the run florida state is just whipping them on defense but i think you're going to see chris keldorf when we come out in the third quarter just something to give him a spark. Well, Keldorf is the type of guy that, as we watched him in practice the other day, that the that the other kids really identify with his leadership abilities. And he has handled the situation of Davenport taking over the number one spot extremely well. In fact, he and Oscar have become closer over the situation, which is speaks volumes for Keldorf. But right now, they need to get close together on the sideline and talk about what they can give each other mentally to help them out of a big hole. Yeah, I think they got to come back on the second half and run the ball. They're going to start that. They're going to try to find a tight end, Algy Crumpler, a little bit. But I think we're going to see Keldorf in this, in, as we come out in the third quarter, unless Oscar sells them on the fact that, uh, you know, they can move this ball early in the third quarter. But they have shown no signs of life on offense. Barely a pulse. Janikowski to kick it off. Gets another good foot into this one. Yanked it to the sideline and it fumbled out of bounds at the two. Well, Parquet fumbled the ball, knocked it out of bounds. And I think the thing to do right now is just go on one knee and then sprint to the locker room. Get out of here. But you know what? You're starting to see the signs of not believing right now that you can win. Lack of concentration right now. Uh, an offense that's uh, discombobbled right now and it, it's just that's the job Mac Brown the coaches are going to have to do at halftime is remember we have a shot to win this football game we're better than this we're just not playing that way on offense. Get the drive at the two yard line. and Florida State still has two timeouts to make it interesting now they're not We'll get the interesting now. They used one. They just used one and, and check what I said. Go on one knee. They're so deep. He can't even go on one knee without picking up a safety. Got to get a little movement now. Just quarterback sneak a couple times and get out of here, like you said. We want to take this opportunity. Well, next Saturday on ESPN 2, 1230 Eastern Time, Tammy Banks and Tim Dwight lead 14th ranked Iowa up against the Northwestern Wildcats. And at 5 o'clock, BYU takes on New Mexico. That one from out in the whack. And at 8 o'clock Eastern, Peyton Manning and the Tennessee Vols are headed to Arkansas to meet the Razorbacks next week on the Deuce. Wisconsin, a big win for Barry Alvarez against Iowa today. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, uh, Chris Lee and uh, Kirk coming up behind the tree. That's over in the corner of the end zone. And they will give their thoughts about this first half, but I think everybody's thoughts are pretty much on the same page, and that is Florida State's defense and Carolina's offense. One has been superb, and the other has been uh, just not existent. his opening half. And as Mike mentioned, Florida State still has one timeout left. That's what they'll do to go straight over the top with think, the quarterback. Yeah, and I think Florida State will just let the clock move because they know they can't stop it long enough to, to get it back anyway. Yeah, so they, the they're just content to get out of here too at half. 
Florida State's defense have, has risen to the occasion. 13 seconds, 12, and that man right there, Mickey Andrews, the architect of that Florida State defense. And you're not going to see him smile right now, maybe even at the end of the ball game, but uh, he's smiling inside because his lads have performed extremely well. It is halftime here at Chapel Hill. As they head to the locker room, our score, the Seminoles, 17, and North Carolina nothing. Now with the Buick Century Halftime Report, let's join Carl Ravage. Judgment Day, Ron. Nebraska's helmet survives, but the other white one there, Penn State, gets knocked for a big-time loop. Welcome, everybody, and coming up on the Century by Buick Halftime Report, much to do on Judgment Day. The judges so far this season have been unkind to Penn State. That should continue when the latest poll comes out. Nebraska, what a fantastic finish they had. You have to see it to believe it. We talk about immaculate receptions. There was another one in this game. Michigan storms into Happy Valley and storms out on Unbeaten. They, right now, have the inside track to the Rose Bowl. This halftime report is presented by Buick Century. Discover a little luxury in this century. On Judgment Day, beyond a reasonable doubt, first half, all Florida State up on North Carolina, 17 to nothing. Top 25 update. The Pac-10 has been turned upside down. Arizona State leading Cal 20 to 7 in the third quarter. Washington State, that is not a misprint, 77 to 7. Ryan Leaf, a huge day, 13 of 21, 305 yards, four touchdowns, one. He rushes in himself. The game being seen on ESPN2 from the Big East. Miami, Virginia Tech. Tech down by 10. How about the speed? That's a freshman. James Jackson. 77 yards. 78 yards. 24-13 at that point, but Virginia Tech now 27-19 as they appear to be holding on in Blacksburg in the fourth with about four minutes left to go in this one. Well, Judgment Day brought everybody to, of course, Chapel Hill this evening on ESPN and Happy Valley. Nobody really thought Columbia, Missouri was a spot for a potential upset, except perhaps the Missouri Tigers, who have won three in a row, put big points on the board, and they bring a pass-happy attack. Remember, you got to go back to the Central Florida game, last time that perhaps a Nebraska team faced the team this effective through the air. Corby Jones finds Eddie Brooks, 38-31 Missouri late in the fourth. Final seconds of regulation, Scott Frost. Matt Davison takes it off the turf. Watch it again. The pass would originally be designed for Shevin Wiggins, number five. Wiggins drops the ball, and then it deflects off his feet. If he intentionally kicked it, it's a flag on Nebraska. 38-38 at the end of regulation, and then Scott Frost. Fourth touchdown of the day rushing. Cornhuskers up 45-38. Missouri trying to convert on their own fourth and seven in overtime. Corby Jones, who is absolutely outstanding, this time cannot avoid the sack. Nebraska a winner, 45-38. Though they knew coming in they needed to put up big numbers, this did not accomplish that goal, but it does accomplish the real goal, which is to stay unbeaten. They are now 9-0. And, of course, Scott Frost, the hero of the game, a game that went not very much the way Nebraska had anticipated. See, and on Judgment Day, some things we do don't go as anticipated. But Scott Frost said the bottom line is we improved to 9-0. and Michigan and Penn State, can they improve? Can one of those teams stay unbeaten? Of course they could. But the other one would have to take a big step back in the polls. Here come the Nittany Lions at home against fellow unbeaten Michigan. First quarter, 3-0 Michigan in. The story of the day. The maize and blue are in the face of the big blue. Glenn Steele takes down Mike McQuarrie. First quarter, same score, Anthony Thomas. 10-0 Michigan. They came in. They were upset by some of the things Mike McQuarrie had said, which were we were going to just go at the side of Charles Woodson. Oh, here they go at the side of Dadrian Taylor, and he lays out Bob Stevenson. Brian Greasy, composed, poised, never appeared rushed. With his foot slipping, he still regains and finds Charles Woodson. Michigan up 17-zip. They roll 
final score, 34 to 8. They hold Penn State to 169 yards of total offense, 38 in the first half, and that Michigan offense, I mean, we talk about that Michigan D, but the Michigan offense, 416 yards of total offense, and Charles Woodson, his third offensive touchdown this year. Yes, Florida State, of course, making a big statement tonight, up 17-0 on North Carolina, but Nebraska squeaks by. A lot of people feel because Michigan was able to go to Penn State and win, they'll be the number one team in the land. Let's see what Chris and company have to say on that from Chapel Hill. Chris? Well, Carl, first of all, what an astounding day. What is it about that same end zone at Faroe Field? That's where Colorado got the fifth down, eventually helped them to a national championship. Seven years later, that incredible play that could help propel the Huskers to a national title shot down in the Orange Bowl. As you mentioned, Florida State not finished making its statement yet. But here's how the coaches poll look coming into the day. Nebraska had a very solid lead, 77 points ahead of Florida State and 153 points ahead of Michigan. The Wolverines had only two first place votes. Now, obviously, the first place votes that Penn State was getting will be up for grabs. But that's a big margin, guys. 153 points would be a lot for Michigan to make up most, if not the vast majority of those coaches voting Nebraska number one would have to change to Michigan. Yeah, first of all, you look at this game tonight, you're seeing on ESPN, Florida State looks very, very good on defense, just flat out dominating North Carolina. The game this afternoon, the Michigan Wolverines, very big win for Lloyd Carr. A lot of people questioning his program earlier this year. He has come out, his team has come out firing. To me, after this weekend, the Michigan Wolverines are the number one team in the country. They are back to playing Michigan football. They look great. Well, Kirk, first of all, God must have been watching on Judgment Day in heaven, <laughs> and he must be a Nebraska fan because that's the only way that play could have happened for Nebraska to win the football game. But I think with that play, they will stay number one because they're so far ahead. But I'll tell you what, the other guys are starting to catch them a little bit by little bit. Well, the margin wasn't quite as big for the Huskers in the Associated Press Bowl. That might be the one where Michigan or perhaps Florida State could make the jump. Now to the guys who witnessed Michigan's dominance firsthand today, Mike Adamley in State College. Mike? Well, Chris, uh, any drama here on Judgment Day in Happy Valley was erased on Penn State's opening offensive possession when Glenn Steele sacked Mike McQuarrie. McQuarrie would only have 68 yards for the day. He was sacked five times. They say seeing is believing. Well, the Michigan defense, every bit as good as advertised. And afterwards, Steve Cyphers caught up with a very elated group of Michigan Wolverine defenders. We just dominated. We were more physical than them. We studied them on film. We felt like the tougher team was going to win. And we came out jacked up. They made a few comments that got us fired up, you know, saying how they was going to tag Woods and how they were going to run it down our throats. No, not until the fourth quarter when the game was already decided. We are Michigan. They're Penn State. What more, what more needs to be said? We shut, shut down the number two team in the country. We shut them down to no points. I mean, they, I think they lucked up pretty much and got those, uh, those eight points in the fourth quarter. But, I mean, the way we came out and just dominated the game, it shows you what kind of team we are. And dominate they did. And Kirk Herbstreet, here's another guy who thinks Michigan deserves to be number one. Bino, what about him? Well, <laughs> I have to wear this helmet for a week. As punishment uh, but, for picking Penn yeah, State. Yeah, for picking Penn State to win. But uh, Michigan, three non-conference games, good teams, all at home, but still good teams. One at Michigan State and one here today. I, I don't see how you cannot, well, at least... I will vote for him, number one. Everybody has his own opinion. We'll have Lloyd Carr sign you up. You look like an old nose guard. Yeah, nose guard, yeah. Chris, this, this is a story from Happy Valley back to you in Chapel Hill. <laughs> <laughs> we got more than one headgear guy now. Remember, Michigan has tests ahead. The game with Wisconsin and Ohio State, so plenty of chance to prove their point. Now, some Florida State players walking into the locker room saying, hey, we're number one, waving up to us, but the job's not done yet. Yeah, not so fast, my friend. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Florida State has had a tendency to let up after big leagues. Last week, they led North Carolina State 27 to nothing and let them back in the ball game. But remember one thing. It's different this week. Bowden's in there right now and saying, look, you want to be number one? Nebraska stumbled. Go out and stick it to these guys, and you got a chance to be number one. If you're not, you better stay high because Michigan's coming, boy. You're still coming. Coaching them up Absolutely. here. I mean, this game is at hand, and you're still coaching them up. We talked about it all day long today. The short field, and if you can get field position, you're going to win the football game tonight. Florida State's defense has flat out dominated. North Carolina can't do anything. Their touchdown drive of 55 yards, another of 28 yards, and they're doing it with special teams and defense, and Florida State is for real. They look great. You say the game's in hand. Carolina's been a great second we'll half see. team. We'll 158 to 43 after the break. That was not against Florida State. So far, a very happy 68th birthday for Bobby Bowden. It is 17 zip at the halftime. More from the studio ahead. Century 
Sponsored by Buick. Halftime reports continue. Second half action still to come. A fight coming up this evening, of course, in the desert. Evander Holyfield, second fight against Michael Moore. He beat him once. Post-fight analysis on ESPN. Round-by-round round coverage on ESPN. That comes your way at 11.30 Eastern time. To the game, Southern Miss, Tennessee. 13 all in the first half. Peyton Manning, Peerless Price, TD, 2013 balls. Third quarter, 27-13, Manning. Marcus Nash, eight yards, and he's in. 34-13 on the ensuing kickoff. Back comes Southern Miss. Eric Booth moves if you get him out of a phone booth. And watch the speed at the end by the kicker, and then in up. 96 yards, 34-20, Tennessee still in the third. Manning getting busy. Nash, 29 yards. And he was on all day, 41-20. Peyton Manning, 35 of 53 for 399. His 16th career, 300-yard game, ties an SEC record. Elsewhere, Oregon at Washington, and the Ducks coming out for an upset. No score first quarter. Akili Smith, A.J. Jelks, an early drive. It ends in a touchdown. It's 7-0. Fourth quarter, Washington coming back from a 24-6 deficit. Marcus Juwasasopo, the freshman starter, Jawarin Hooker, they hook up at 28-24 Huskies. The Ducks respond. Smith, Pat Johnson, the Ducks ahead, and the Ducks hang on, and they pull off an upset. 31-28, and of course, one of the toughest buildings to win in. So the Pac-10 race, as we showed you the other games going on in the top 25, very much up for grabs. Speaking of the top 25, Purdue, Michigan State, 21-16, two minutes to go. Chris Daniels recovers an onside kick for the Boilermakers. It is Purdue ball. They got this close by blocking a field goal and returning it for a touchdown. Edwin Watson from two yards out. Purdue's grabbed a lead. Michigan State final chance. No. Chris Gardner has a kick blocked and returned, and then he misses there. Iowa, Wisconsin. Ron Dane, an ankle injury. He's done for the day in the first. Back up, Eddie Faulkner barrels in from four yards out. 10 0 Badgers. They hang on and beat Iowa by a score of 13 to 10. Florida trying to get back in the wins column. Noah Brindai starts. No Doug Johnson. Gators win 20 to 7. LSU, Alabama. Kevin Falk doesn't start. His hamstring loosens up. His forearm is fine. Two touchdown runs. This one covers 53 yards. He goes for a buck 68. Syracuse, after their sixth straight win, many feels if they're playing the best ball in the Big East. Kevin Johnson turns outside, turns up field, and the Oregon win 20 to 13. McNabb over 200 yards and a touchdown. Well, E.G. Green now, six touchdowns in his last three games. The Florida State Seminoles over Carolina, 17 to Your seat today. On our score to halftime, 17 to nothing, Florida State. We mentioned off the top of the telecast, it's Bobby Bowden's birthday. He's 68, and Mickey Andrews, the defensive coordinator, gave him the first gift on his birthday. That was a first-half defense that was unbelievable. Ron, they've just dominated North Carolina in every phase of the game, and uh, you just can't overcome that now. Second half's going to be important that they, North Carolina comes out and gives a quick shot, and here you see a sack by Wadsworth. Good coverage by Tay Cody. They're, they're jolting the receivers around, and... When North Carolina tries to run the football, nothing there. So total dominance by the Florida State defense in the first half. And here are the numbers, 105 yards passing, 17 for Carolina. And look at the minus 8 in rushing yards in that first half. And look at this, 0 for 7 on third downs. You can't keep the chains. Four sacks by Florida State. Janikowski to kick it off for Florida State. And this one is returnable from the goal line. Parquet. And he gets wrapped down hard. Shy of the 15. Let's check in with Adrian Karsten. Adrian? Ron, thanks very much. Oscar Davenport will start the second half at quarterback for the North Carolina Tar Heels. But from Mac Brown, his words are, he may not be in there for very long. He will be able to tell by the look in Oscar's face after he comes out after that first series whether or not he has the leadership 
to make these guys believe that they can win this game. There's still a phobia here, Ron. They may not be sure that they can beat the Seminoles, and they've got to get over there. Well, we'll see if this is a wise decision. I'm not sure. Well, I think it is, because you got to go back to the original game plan. This first drive is very important. If you're going to make anything happen, it's got to be in this first drive. Lenton, eight yards, nine, and very close to ten yards on the first play of the second half. Here were some of those first half woes. Davenport to throw, got hit. That's called a fumble. Wadsworth picks it up, and then he lateraled it. And this interception right here. So... They come out and run the ball, and it will be called a 10-yard pickup on the opening play of the second half. So that's the second first down of the ball game by the offense of North Carolina. Total three. Play action. Going to go on top. Got the reception. Flag is down. L.C. Stevens covered by Samari Roll, but not closely enough, and he almost broke it away for the touchdown. 33 yards. Ron, already on the, this play, you can see Oscar Davenport, a little better concentration, a little better protection, hits L.C. Stevens, and this first drive, to me, is the ball game. If North Carolina can take it down the field, gain some confidence, you want to do the, the first five minutes of the third quarter is the whole ball game for North Carolina here. You know, Samari was very close to being called for a trip also because that was the only way he could get him down. Glenton with the running play. They take it to the right side. Very short yardage. Julian Pittman is the man who grabbed him first. And they're going to call it a gain of a yard and a half. That's the great thing about halftime. You get to take your football team in there. First half, nine yards. Last three plays, of course, they have 46. But you get to take your team in the locker room, assemble them, get to talk to all of them together individually as a group, and now say, here's the challenge. We're, we're slow starters. Let's go out and try to finish this thing off and play loose. Second down, you can see Florida State strung up and down the line of scrimmage. That is for under pressure, and he's going to be sack number 90. Greg Spires, the senior out of Cape Coral, Florida, comes through, and now it's going to be a third down and long situation, which goes back to exactly what Mike talked about in the first half. You can't make a living against Florida State with third and long. No, Greg Spires just went right around Ryan Huffman. Spires was injured in the first four games, only played two plays against Miami. Last year, he was a defensive tackle. They moved him outside. This year, he's playing much better as a defensive end. Ryan Hoffman, the senior out of Orange Park, Florida, is the one who is trying to block on that side. And you see him cheat back a little bit here, Ron, to try to help himself in pass protection. Play clock down to one. They got it off. And he is hit low, and that's Wadsworth who will get the sack. Six sacks by Florida State tonight, and the finalist for the Lombardi Award is showing tonight in a big ball game why he's one of the four finalists. And last year, Peter Bolwer, Florida State, led the country with 19 sacks, and Andre Wadsworth is the best defensive lineman in college football. Peter Warwick is back deep. Schmitz was blocked, or had his kick blocked. Back in the first half, the last time he attempted. Lord State looking uh, for a fake, weren't they, Mike? Yes, they were. Punch safe. Bearcats is signal for and made, and that's going to be a flag. And yes, there was not enough space as the defensive player had come up and was tidying the man, trying to get him to... to uh, to drop the football. That's Steve Fisher. When you have a big game, you'd like to have big game officials. This group, I think, has done a superb job tonight from the ACC. What they're trying to prevent by doing that is watch how close he comes to him, and it's run buys. So he's running up, stomping his feet, and he is within the six-foot barrier. But run buys is what, when those players go flying by the guy and they scream at him to make him drop the football, and they want to cut all that out. To the 19-yard line. Now, North Carolina defensively must hold them back here. Now, this is probably the worst field position, one of the worst 
positions Florida State's had offensively yeah. against Not the worst, but the bottom yeah, second. They, could, they had great field position in the first half. Carolina packs it up at the line of scrimmage, the running play, and... Travis Miner hit by Russell Davis. You can see Vonnie Holiday, also number 90, who was pressuring, who beat his man. It was trailing down the line of scrimmage. Average field position as we look at our start chart for Florida State in the first half. Started inside the 15-yard line. Now look, all the time they started inside the 40-yard line. The 46-yard line, their own 46, you can't give Florida State a short field, and North Carolina did in the first half. Well, you see this one, they had one at the 15, and then this one are the two worst, and all those others were, were gravy. Busby's pass, complete. The 31-yard line is Warwick, and he got hit by Terry Phillips immediately. But that will be enough for the Florida State first down. I think this has been the impressive part of the Florida State offense tonight. When need be, they have been very patient to take exactly what North Carolina would give them instead of going for the home run, which they do a lot of times. They've made a couple adjustments. The third receiver, which we saw a lot in the first half, and moving their receivers to get them away from bump and run. Warwick was shaken up in the play. He's not being attended to, but he did go to the sideline. He has three catches for 38. Carolina shows blitz, and they go with the running play. Minor breaks it outside. Has five, has 10, and will be tackled after a gain of 12 by Greg Williams. He came very close to running by the blitzing players and take it at the distance. Well, Florida State is just the opposite of most teams in the country. They throw the football to set up the run. When you throw the football, you have some success. And then all of a sudden, you run the football, you give it to Travis Miner, you catch him inside, you get good blocks on the linebackers, you're in the secondary, and you get a big gain. Stringer out there blocking 45 yards on 12 attempts by Travis Miner. Miner again wiggles his way. Miner. This is going to be a gain of one, and that's it. How good Chittick makes the tackle. Nate is senior out of Allentown, Pennsylvania, 6'5", 280. What this does, Ron, is when you run this type of play off the shotgun where you're kind of consistently giving it to Travis Miner, you set up the bootleg where you fake to Travis Miner, then you catch the linebackers moving to the run, and then you get the crossing routes against the secondary. So let's see what uh, Florida State, when they go to that. Second down at about eight. Near sideline, Warwick, and that's a push-off, and there will be no flag as he's still on his feet and finally pushed out of bounds on the near sideline. And I think when you look at the replay, Warwick pushed off the defensive back to gain his open situation. Doesn't look to me that uh, Robert Williams has come in this ball game now, unless I'm missing him out there somewhere. But this is a backup, Terry Billups, number 25, trying to cover Peter Warwick. I do not see Robert Williams in there. So they've got Billups in there as a backup now. So with his first down, Florida State, the ball at the 29 yard line of North Carolina. Phillips, a senior out of Orlando, Florida. They bring the linebacker on the blitz, and Travis Miner. Oh, did he take a shot from number nine, Keith Newman. Keith, a junior out of Tampa, Florida, and let's check in with Carl Ravage. Carl? Hi, Ron. A lot of great finishes. One this evening, Miami, Virginia Tech. Down two on a two-point conversion. Ryan Clement looking at the end zone. Pearson Prelo steps in front, picks it off, and Virginia Tech hangs on and wins the game by that score, 27-25. Okay. As we come back to live action, here's Williams on the sideline, and he is being checked over on the sideline, and he's kind of motionless right there, Mike. That's a tough loss because now you got one of the best corners in college football against this receiver group on the sideline. Miner breaks it through inside the 25, and he's very close to the 20-yard line as Newman makes the tackle, and now slowly but surely on this drive, 
Florida State putting the run to use. And folks, there's going to be a stake in the heart if they continue well, to do this quickly. And I made a statement early in the first quarter with a Michigan score over Penn State. They may hurdle Nebraska. Forget about hurt on Florida State. Oh, I mean, they may hurdle everybody themselves. This it probably is the number one football team in the country the way they're playing tonight. Florida State is awesome on defense. This is four times on this drive that they have used the run. Trying to run the clock, trying to establish the run, which will just open Busby more. Miner gets the pitch, gets the block from the fullback, Abdullah, but not enough, and it will be tackled. Davis and Omar Brown came up. It's going to be short, so it'll be fourth down at about two, and Bobby Bowden does not hesitate. His kicking unit comes on the field. Well, the stake's not in the heart yet. They're still alive. Good defensive play there. Dre Bly on that side over there. Pringley. Oscar Davenport on the sideline as this attempt will be 40 yards for the left footer. Sebastian Janikowski. And we say they better be ready for a fake also. Good pass. Plenty of distance and plenty of accuracy on the kick. And he splits it. So there's a timeout on the field. 6.58 left in the third quarter. Florida State extends their lead 20 to nothing. Sundays. ESPN's presentation of college football, Florida State versus North Carolina, is brought to you by MCI Five Cent Sundays. Pay the least on the day you call most. Now there's a look at the two quarterbacks on the sideline, uh, Davenport on the left, Keldorf on the right. Mike, at halftime, I saw Dean Smith down in the uh, Carolina basketball booth. A typical coach, he said, Ron, we can come back. I said, Coach, do you think so? He said, I, I really do, but right now I think we're a little in shock at how, just how good they are. <laughs> Good. They put on a show tonight. Antoine Black with this return just beyond the five yard line. And he will take it to the 22. And let's check in with Adrian Carson on an injury report. Adrian? I have the injury reports uh, shortly. You want to tell you about Chris uh, Keldorf. Apparently, he is not going to go in the game now because Oscar Davenport won the confidence of Cleve Bryant and Mac Brown in that first drive, so he's going to stay in the game. Now, on Robert Williams, good news. They were afraid that he had pulled his hamstring, but apparently just a bruise. They massaged it. He's back up and running and should be back in the game shortly. Okay, Adrian, thanks. Adrian on the spot for us. Something about Chris Keldorf. Oh, he is a team guy all the way. If you're looking at Will and see if we hope it's back in this ball game. <laughs> Lefty tries the right side. Corey Simon, one of the first men there. Also, you could see Bush in the vicinity. Corey Simon on the tackle. A lot goes into a decision when you're going to pull a quarterback because Oscar Davenport has won big games for him this year. Still got Clemson on the road next week, Duke, and they're going to be in a bowl game. So you don't want to hurt the confidence of your quarterback either. He's a junior. He's going to be back next year. A lot goes into whether when you pull a guy. See the clock running up. About to go under six minutes to play in this third quarter as both teams have run the football quite a bit in the third. Play action. Davenport puts it on his hip and is not going to be fooling Greg Spires. As Greg stayed at home and made the tackle, knocking him for a loss, and Davenport is down. The decision might be made for Mac Brown here. We know how good an athlete Oscar Davenport is. He can't outrun Greg Spires. Just a naked fake. Spire shows you his athletic ability pulling him down. They are attending to his legs. It is impossible to tell from that angle exactly where. So there's a timeout on the field. Let's take it with him. Florida State 20 to nothing. We'll be right back. Oscar Davenport had to be carried off the field and in a moment we'll show you the replay of what happened to him as he injured his ankle and Chris Keldorf has come in and we need to tell you this may be hard to watch so you might want to look away from the screen as his ankle gets caught underneath him and just turns right there like inside out so he is down with an ankle injury we will get an updated report but it looked really really bad 
when he was tackled by Spires. And he didn't get a lot of help tonight either. Uh, no. His offensive line, uh, the, just the whole game plan of the offense just didn't give much help to Oscar. Keldorf on third down, puts this one very long, got a man there, and it is tipped away at the very last moment as Dexter Jackson got back. Octavius Barnes gave up on the ball for a second and then took off again. Yeah, good coverage, oh, by Dexter Jackson. What you want out of a defensive back is to play the ball in the air. He was just right where he needed to be. Chris Keldorf trying to get the ball to Octavius Barnes down the field. And you can see Dexter Jackson come back, found the football, deflected it away from LC or from uh, Octavius Barnes. Dee Feaster is the deep man this time as Smith stands back to kick at the four-yard line. Seminoles rushing one more player on the field at the last moment. Not a good kick off the side of his foot. Now takes a Carolina bounce, and he's going to wind up. In the newspaper, this one will look great. He's going to have about 15 yards more than what he should have gotten. 52 yards on that one. Well, coming up, ESPN's NFL Prime Monday. Join Mike Tirico and company at 7.30 Eastern for 90 minutes of nonstop NFL news features and analysis, leading you right up to ABC's Monday Night Football. This week, Steve Young and the NFC West leading San Francisco 49ers take on the Philadelphia Eagles, 9 o'clock Eastern on ABC. Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Adrian Karsten coming to you from a jam-packed Keenan Stadium at Chapel Hill, North Carolina. 20 to nothing, the Seminoles are leading. It was Travis Minor again. And this time, the Tar Heels diagnosed this one well. Omar Brown, the first guy to get to him. Number two, Omar Brown. Robert Williams is back in the ball game, number 29. But, Ron, he looks to me like he's limping a little bit. Uh, as Peter Warwick came off the the ball here, just look at the space now. He's given Peter Warwick. It just doesn't look to me like he's looks like he's limping a little bit. Well, as, as Adrian men mentioned, he didn't pull the hamstring. It was more like a bruise they thought. So after the massage, they let him go back in. But you're right. He looked affected there. Second in line. Travis Minor waits for his block, uses it well, and he is close to the first down. And Brandon Spoon will make the tackle. And the one difference, as they look at Davenport on the sideline, the one difference in Travis Minor from watching him early in the year and now is he has learned patience in how to wait for his blocker and wait for them to clear for it. He looks just like the player that played last year. Not as, number he wears. Yeah, yeah, not as effective just yet, but you remember he's only a freshman, so uh, work done we're talking about. 63 yards for him tonight. You can see North Carolina minus yardage. It is third down, line to make the 40 and one half yard line. North Carolina couldn't get lined up, Ron, taking the timeout. Show this uh, timeout on the field. Let's take it with them. 4:01 to play, third quarter. Florida State continues to lead, 20 to nothing. Full Hill. Well, Dean Smith, watching this ball game tonight, I visited with him at halftime, as I mentioned to you. I, told him, I said, "You look relaxed." He said, "Always look relaxed, Ron." And I said, "I think even more so uh, in this ball game." Uh, but anyway, I, you know, what a magnificent, magnificent job the man did. And he deserves at this time to be relaxed and kind of kick back and do some things he was not able to do this time of year. Dre Bly. Will Florida State go play action and try to finish this one off with a play action pass, or will they run it? Yep, they'll try to run it. Miner back into the boundary, and he didn't get it. That's Brandon Spoon, number 44, a young fellow that they think is going to step right up and be one just like Simmons and K. Mays and uh, Keith Newman. Yeah, there's no doubt he's an outstanding defensive lineman, and, and when you look at this ball game tonight, you say, well, maybe North Carolina didn't measure up, but this defense in North Carolina is one of the better defenses in the country. They played well enough on their side of the ball. They just didn't get any help, didn't get any field position help, and it's just tough to play the entire ball game on defense. Yeah, they're going to measure it right there because that's where the sticks were, and you see the applause 
by the Carolina defense that they have held them. Florida State trying to run the football more in the second half, get a clock on because they know they've dominated the offense. There's no threat of North Carolina on offense, so try to run the clock. This kick fielded by Bly at the 21. And Dre will take it back to the 31-yard line. And let's check in with Adrian Karsten. Ron, an inflatable cast has been applied to the right ankle of Oscar Davenport to immobilize a probable broken right ankle. They'll find out for sure when they take him to the locker room shortly. Definitely out of this game. Okay. Thanks, Adrian. Uh, boys, Dre, tough, tough loss over there. Now Dre Blyde limping off the field, and Williams the other corner. We saw him limping just a bit ago, so uh, what has turned into a disastrous evening for the Tar Heels is, uh, is getting worse by the moment. I think the 25-second clock is moving here, and North Carolina's on the sideline, so they they got to hurry here. There it is, six seconds, down to five. Keldor, play action, dumps it off, and that's to the fullback, Dyer, and he drops the football as he got hit by Darrell Bush. This Florida State defense tonight has been one of the more dominating defenses I've seen in college football. And they have just drawn a line and said, you're not getting any yardage, and Mickey Andrews' defense has they could die. They, it's almost like they're in the huddle. They, they, they just have dominated entirely. That's Dyer in motion away from the line of scrimmage. Second and ten. Keldorf under pressure, and he's going to be sacked, and that's Greg Spires. Boy, the two defensive ends tonight have just done anything they really wanted to do. And now it's going to be third down at an acre. And for North Carolina situation here where you better not put it up for grabs. Well, you'd like to be Greg Spires because you know that Andre Wadsworth is going to draw the back and, and double coverage. So most of the time you're going to get one-on-one -on -one coverage with the offensive tackle when Greg Spires shows you why he has had a great night. They've sacked North Carolina quarterbacks eight times last year and they're having their way tonight. Keldorf over the middle, has it complete. Brown was looking to get hit and lost his balance. If he turned, pulled his head up, he might have picked up even more yardage. And you can see the frustration that they've had offensively. Nate Brown just kind of clutching the ball there at the end of the play. Running a crossing route, they get good protection. Nate Brown zone coverage by Florida State. Daryl Bush is right behind him. You see the frustration as he comes up. Chris Keldorf trying to give him that little spark here with 2:05 in the third quarter to just stay alive in this ball game. This is an outstanding young man. You can tell he has a great throwing motion. Has not played nearly as well this year, but Mike's right. He is one of the spark plugs in this ball club. Puts this ball up too far and intercepted but out of bounds. Samari Roll came down with it, but he did not come down inbound. And that's what you have to be so careful of against a secondary like Florida State as Oscar Davenport is loaded up and they will take him into the locker room. As Adrian said, they have the air cast on and they will uh, x-ray him to see if that ankle is in fact broken. Well, we wish him the best. Uh, here a good defensive play by Samari Rowe, he may have had that, Ron. I'll tell you what, he's bobbling that's a little bit yeah, there, but I think he, he had it. That that shows unbelievable athletic ability, though, as far as controlling his body, and he still almost came down with it, going out of bounds. That shows you the blanket that they've been able to put on the passing game in North Carolina. They're right on top of the receivers. Now there are people moving all over the place this time. The offensive line, safety blitz by Florida State. They got a little jittery in the offensive line. See if they jumped in the neutral zone or the offensive line move. Oscar Davenport's going to leave tonight, but you have to remember all the good things he's done. Now he, he's got this ball club 8-0. No. 
and he uh, was against a great defense. Let's check in with Adrian Carson. Adrian, well, his replacement now, Chris Keldorf. Interesting story here. He is only the second junior college transfer ever signed by Mac Brown. Had the chance to go to six other Division I programs, two of them top 20 teams, but Mac was so impressed with the way he comes into the game and plays like he's been playing for a full quarter or two. Went to Dean Smith's basketball camp back in 91 as well. So that's when he fell in love with the pine trees and the... Uh, Blue of Carolina. That running play going to go for nothing. Greg Spires again. I'll tell you, Spires and Wadsworth have just, it's, it's like they're, they're more than one, 85 and 90 on the field. Well, remember, Bo Ware and Renard Wilson, I mean, they're playing the same way as those two played last year and dominated the ACC. Good play by Spires. Now, Ron, the problem you get with Chris Keldorf is if Mickey Andrews, you figure Mickey Andrews is going to come after him. He, he, he doesn't have the mobility that Oscar Davenport has at the quarterback position, so I'd look for a lot of blitzes from here on in to Chris Keldorf. Carolina's 1 of 10 on third down conversions. Under a minute to play, third quarter. Zings this one complete and hit immediately and thrown back by Dexter Jackson. A. Brown made the catch, but he was under all kind of duress, and it's fourth down. Just, again, tough coverage where you're man-to-man -man coverage, you get a blitz, and the defensive backs, Dexter Jackson just sitting on the route. Here comes the blitz. Here's Jackson sitting on the route right here, making the tackle short of the first down. Fourth down, and Carolina will go for it. Line to make is the 35, and the crowd will let you know. Samari Roll is going to be flagged. think there's any doubt Samari Roll reaches out on Nate Brown and holds his jersey and another good call so that is the end of the third quarter and as they head yep they do have one more play because of the penalty so they're asking him to come back but if Carolina doesn't do something on this play right here as they are asking him to come back on the field that's the reason for the hold up right now if they do, Mike, it'll be seven straight quarters that Florida State has shut out North Carolina. Talk about big games, yeah. They, they made this a sod game tonight, so they put the importance on this game. Fourth quarter of 95 was the last time North Carolina scored on the Seminoles. You can say that about a lot of teams now. They may have not gone back to 95, but it's hard to score on this football team. Well, with the penalty, and they, you can't end the quarter on a penalty, so it's first down at the Seminole 25-yard line. Got a pass overthrown, and that will be the final play of the third quarter. So there's a timeout on the field, and as we head to the final 15 minutes of play, Florida State 20, North Carolina nothing. But yes. We're back to start the final 15 minutes. Seven points in the first, ten in the second, three in the third. That's how it's gone. And, and for seven straight quarters, Carolina has been shut out by this Florida State defense. Gets a pass off quickly. And boy, Crumpler has to pay for it. Only his first catch tonight. Tate Cody came up and made the tackle on him. But Tate Cody just came up and made a picture-perfect tackle on Algie Crumpler. Tight end just going right in the flat. And now you can see Cody start up and watch this tackle. Just measures him up. Cody's only 180 yeah. and Crumpler makes 250, so... He brought all that 180 there. 
Jeff Saturday, the center, pointed out blocks to the offensive line as he makes all the calls. Peldorf going to be sacked by Tony Bryant, and if you remember, you saw somebody leaping over a blocker. It was Bryant who jumped over the top of the blocker and then made the tackle. This is why Florida State is superb on defense, though. They bring the backups in a lot. This is Bryant right here just leaping over the tackle and making the sack. But he's the backup to Spire, so they give him a lot of playing time. 46-yard field goal attempt. He must have been a hurdler. That was really good form. This is a 46-yard field goal attempt. A key to attempt it. Good pass, and he's got the distance. And he's got it. So the drop is no more. 13-34 left in the ball game in our new score, Florida State 20 and North Carolina 3. We'll be back with more after this. presentation of college football Florida State versus North Carolina is brought to you by Zales the diamond and holiday gift store Ron Franklin Mike Gottfried and Adrian Karsten coming to you from uh, jam-packed Chapel Hill North Carolina 20 to 3 our score and uh, some of the folks with their signs particularly those that are wearing garnet and gold are trying to show them off Mike, you've made this point before. The entire Florida State band came up here for this one. They normally designate only one or two travels a year, but this one they knew would be that kind of large game, well, so they traveled them. You're right, and the, and the coaches may have something to do with that because you want your band at a tough place to play. The ball's fumbled by Coles. No harm, though, as it goes out of the back of the end zone, and they'll take it at the 20. Well, it's college basketball Tuesday night at ESPN2. It's uh, the coaches versus Cancer Classic from the New Jersey Meadowlands. Georgia takes on NC State live at 7.30. That's followed by the Texas Running Horns against Princeton Slow It Down Tigers. The winners will meet in the championship game on Wednesday night, 9 o'clock, back here on the Big E, ESPN. Ron, now North Carolina's got to step up defensively. They have any chance to catch them and... Uh, and I don't think a lot of people around here feel like they have a shot right now. This is the way this kind of night is going, but this defense needs to step up right here. See the linebackers creeping up. They come in the blitz, but they go with the running play. Has five, has ten, and Miner off to the races. Kay Mays finally catches him from behind, and there was a flag down as he went over the 50-yard line. That's a gain of 30. going to tack on the face mask and we talked about the X factor in this football game and that was five yard press with the face mask on the defense five yards into the run first down six touchdowns in the last two games Ron the little out of the uh, shotgun the draw and you can see North Carolina not tackling very well not getting off blocks and it looks like a very tired defense well, they should be. They've been through a lot. We talk about the X Factor tonight, and there he is. We said that if he ran and ran well, that it changed everything in his ball game. And boy, has it ever. And he in the second half has become the biggest factor. They run him again. It's time for the right. Stretch to the outside. Breaks the tackle. Has five yards, and is going to be stopped after that as Omar Brown will grab a hold of him and won't let go. Slowed up by Omar Brown. Again, more missed tackles Tackle by North by Carolina Brian. at the line of scrimmage. Not doing a good job of bringing down Travis Miner, who was injured early in the year. And uh, they tried some different tailbacks, and he established himself in the Virginia game on the first play that we had as the number one tailback here. And, and he'll be very, very difficult to get out of this lineup for the next three, four years. Yeah, I, I think you're exactly right. In fact, somebody made the point as uh, the clock has been stopped, and now what? There's some problem over on the... Uh, Florida State sideline. Carolina has a player yeah, who's way down, way, way back. Yeah, way back off the sideline that we couldn't see because, and now you see the Carolina players gathering around him. What? Florida State's trainers had come over to help out as well. 
you mentioned this early, Ron. Uh, not only are they getting beat on the field now, but they got a big game next week at Clemson. At Clemson. You're and right. they are getting physically beaten up here tonight, too. So we talked about both Dre Bly and Robert Williams have been hobbled tonight. Obviously, Oscar Davenport may have a broken ankle. They've taken him in an air cast to the locker room to uh, to x-ray him. And, you're not. and a lot of bumps and bruises. You normally have those this time of year, but in this ball game tonight, we've seen a lot of people hobbled. Let's check in while we have a delay here with Carl Ravage. Carl? Hi, Ron. Of course, the Heisman race still hot and heavy. Peyton Manning had a good day, as did Charles Woodson. How about Ricky Williams for Texas? Bottled up big time in his quest to go over 200, five straight weeks, 20 carries, 77 yards. Meantime, the Pac-10 picture a little muddled after Washington loses. Arizona State takes care of California, 28-21. Okay, Carl will finally the injured player is Robert Williams. They got him out of that maze of players, and they are taking him right to the locker room. Yep, they really are. And Mike, either that, maybe he did pull the hamstring, yeah. and it's stiff, you know, it's tightened up on him because of the cool night. He, he, he was limping around, so uh, he, he was affected by that. Reggie Love will replace him. So if you just joined us, the situation, 12-25, and the clock is running. That's what we have left in the ballgame. Florida State 20 and North Carolina 3. And it's a second down and five for the Seminole. Minor again. Back into the short side of the field, and he is very close to the first down. In fact, from where the linesman has come out, uh, he may have it. It's Bonnie Holiday along with Kay Mays on the tackle for Carolina. When you look at this ball game and you look at the offensive line of Florida State, Jason Whitaker, number 68, who's a sophomore, a, a guard, he has led and pulled on that very play that Travis Miner has carried on and got a lot of key blocks tonight. He has played an excellent football game. And on the other side, Ron, they got Trey Thomas, who Mel Kuyper says is one of the top 15 offensive linemen uh, or top draft choices, number 70. He's six foot eight, 330 pounds. So they've got a pretty good line tonight. Yeah, and Trey, that, uh, that headgear looks a little small, doesn't it? <laughs> Greg Ellis told me the other day, he said when he watched him on film, he's got such long arms, he, he felt like that the only way he could get around him is speed rushing. Pass is caught, pass thrown short, inside the 15-yard line, and he stepped out of bounds, and he'll say right at the 15-yard line. How many times do you see that? The ball was underthrown. Harold came back and made the catch. And they have so many wide receivers. They've gone to Lavernius Coles. Damian Harrell has played a lot tonight, but you're going to see him adjust to the football against Reggie Love. He knows it's underthrown, stops on a dime, makes the catch. Reggie Love finally forces him out of bounds. And the official marks it just short of the 15-yard line. You can see he stepped out of bounds there. Seven different receivers Busby has found tonight. First down, they go with the running play. Miner cuts it back into the middle. Screaming through tacklers, and a flag comes down. And he is inside the 10, down to the 8. It's going to be a hold, I think, on Florida State. Looked like Kevin Long against K. Mays. And they're talking about it there. He may apologize and said he may have used my hands a little bit there on you. There's the hold right here. And I'd say he's got him twisted. <laughs> Yeah, as the ball carrier went by, if he'd let him go, yeah. that flag might not have come down. But uh, he took him in a, in a full at least a 180. So uh, 
pushes the ball back to around the 24 and a half yard line. Bobby Bowden said that Bob Long said he's the glue and leadership that keeps our offense together, and that's a, a big praise for a center. High formation. Miner wrapped up at the line of scrimmage this time. Kay Mays again is there to make the hit. The senior out of Anniston, Alabama. Started playing football while he was six years old. The father was in the military. And the reason he's called K because Kaba Yusuma is how you pronounce his first name. It's just a lot easier on everybody. Coaches particularly. You just call him K. Big middle linebacker. Strong, fast, 6'4", 240. And he can plug up those runs inside. Eighth tackle by K. Mays tonight. The go from the shotgun. Busby. He got hit as he got it away, and the pass incomplete at the two-yard line. Greg Ellis with the big rush, and the crowd over there wanted to push off on the receiver. Greg Ellis has not quit on his pass rush on Thad Busby tonight. He's been in there several times. Tried to pay, play Pee Wee League football when he's in the fifth grade, but he weighed 20 pounds over the limit, so he didn't get to play, and his mom told him, said, your time will come. And he will be one of the top picks as a defensive lineman. Well, interesting tonight that we have two of the four finalists for the Lombardi Award down in Houston this year. Uh, Greg, and of course, on the other side, Andre Wadsworth, the big defensive end for Florida State. Third down for the Seminoles. They need to take it to the six-yard line to keep this drive going. Does he going to run? Right up the middle, gets a block. And that will be stopped at the 16-yard line. And now we've got pushing and shoving Dre Bly along with Lavernus Coles way down in the end zone. That's a football player right there now. Dre Bly's had a great night. They have stayed away from him. He has blanketed the receiver that he's covered, whether it's been E.G. Green or Peter Ward. So this field goal attempt is going to be 35 yards. Made a couple tonight, 32 and 40. Missed it, wide right. So let's take a timeout. 9.27 left in the ball game. Our score remains Florida State 20 and North Carolina 3. Big Trey Thomas having his ankle attended to. They're rewrapping him on the sideline. One defensive number that uh, we should point out tonight is that uh, Greg Spires, the defensive end, five tackles tonight and four of quarterback sacks. He has had an outstanding ball game as, as Andre Wadsworth has had. Wadsworth's got four. Three of those are quarterback sacks. with the running play. No, beg your pardon, play action fooled everybody in the pass. Going to be intercepted by Dexter Jackson. And a flag goes down following the interception. Chris Keldorf just led him too far in the middle of the football field. Face mask of the tackle following the interception. the interception. Five yard, grasping the face mask. Five yards, first down. Good fake by Chris Keldorf. Just leads it too far in the middle of the football field. Threw it right to Dexter Jackson sitting in center field. Good coverage by Florida State. Keeping the free safety in the middle of the field. Boy, he could have called a 15-yarder on that, but as he grabbed onto that face mask and held onto it. Well, this is a frustrated football team. These, Mac Brown and his staff are going to have to do a great job of rebuilding the confidence of this football team before next Saturday when yeah, they Tommy, go to Clemson. Yeah, Tommy West and his staff know that they're getting a, a team that is bruised 
both physically and their egos as well. As Meyer takes it back into the boundary, and he'll be tackled by Brandon Spoon again, number 44. And what happens, Ron, is and I was here a couple weeks ago to watch a practice, but everybody, the students, the community, they all were talking and focusing on this football game. And then to come out and, and lose a ball game, to, which is no shame to lose to a Florida State. I mean, they're an outstanding. They may be the best team in the country. If I had a boat, I'd boat them number one right now. But now they've got to get over this game, and, it's, and they can't linger on. They got about 24 hours to get over this game, and they got to be start to get ready for Clemson, or they get beat again next week. Miner gets by one tackle, gets it to the outside, tries to turn the corner, and it's Keith Newman from the middle linebacking spot, the Rover, who comes over to make the tackle. Adrian Karsten, what do you have for us? A uh, reminder to you two and our viewers of a conversation we had with Mac Brown yesterday, who said, you know, being 8-0 is more difficult than actually preparing this week for this game, and in that, North Carolina are already winners, because all respect to the basketball program, they weren't talking about Ron Ball on the front page this week. We'd really crossed and there are very high expectations now here in the tar pit a brand new uh, nickname for this field and the things they've accomplished so far so still a very big step for this program I think Ron okay Adrian and Ron you look at that facility that they have built here in the end zone you can see how progressive they are here there it is right here above nope. the, well, the North the Carolina one. yeah right here uh, just put a bunch of money in this and this is as good a facility as anybody in America has. So they're going to recruit. They're going to keep recruiting good. Uh, uh, and if you remember, they were 2-20 and 20 in his first two years here. So this has been quite a turnaround, and uh, they just have not been able to get by Florida State, a lot like the SEC teams up until this year with Florida. Yeah, that's right. Good parallel. goes to Miner. This time got away from his blockers and Brian Simmons just ate him up. And that'll be a lesson that he will log very well as he ran away from his blocker and found out Simmons may weigh 238 pounds but he can run laterally as quick as he can. Well with Nebraska winning uh, a game against Missouri, Michigan we know uh, beat uh, Penn State pretty solidly. Where do you put Florida State? I put him number one right now. I move him right ahead of everybody. I put them number one, and that Michigan team goes go to number there. two. Yep. They go there. And Michigan you're, you're goes to number two. Yeah. I don't, I don't, yeah, probably would do that. Nebraska's going to drop down to three, and uh, I'll tell you who becomes a factor now, right there, Tennessee. Starting an inch up there. Third down running plays only going to go for a yard and a half. Greg Ellis is down at the bottom of the pile, uh, making the tackle. Florida State, they've done what they need to do, and now they're content to run the football, run the clock down. They want to get on a plane and head back to Tallahassee. Sixth punt of the night for the Seminoles. up the middle. Cottrell gets away a hanging spiral. Gray Bly, no fair catch, and now runs out of bounds at about the 11-yard line. He circled in every direction he could. Florida State did too good a job of covering in the special teams. 545 left in our ball game. Florida State by 17. SPN. Well, we're back in Chapel Hill, 20 to 3, with 5 minutes and 45 seconds uh, left on our clock. And in case you missed it, first part of the telecast, the reason for the note there, happy birthday, Bobby. Bobby Bowden, his 68th birthday today. That's Jason Peace, who catches the ball right over the middle, and let's check in with Carl Ravage. Carl? Oregon against Washington, the Pac-10 with Washington going down, now up for grabs, and here's how it happened. Smith to Pat Johnson, and Akili connects. 29 yards later, Oregon upsets him 31-28. Ron, it's yours. Okay, the Ducks playing it tough today. The pass just thrown into the ground so that it would not be uh, intercepted, and it'll be a uh, third down. I saw the Orange Bowl people a little earlier up here in the press box, and Nebraska was down, and they were asking for a razor blade. 
to cut their throats, but uh, the way the things have gone tonight, uh, they sit pretty, pretty good shape with the Nebraska coming back and winning. Florida State playing pretty well here tonight. So uh, what looked like a disaster for them turned out okay tonight. Geldorf sets to the pocket, throws that one complete. And May Brown is tackled by Saunders immediately. It's going to be a very short game. You see Saunders with his hand across his chest, holding his ribs there for a second. Now appears to be okay. Again, Mickey Andrews getting to play young players to get more depth in big ball games. That's the key for them on defense. Just keep building up depth in the defensive line and all of the positions. Tipped, almost intercepted. Howard was close to it, but he trapped that one. You never got a feeling tonight, though, that ever they were in danger defensively, Florida State. You're exactly right. Now, defensively, felt. Carolina played well enough, yeah. particularly in the first quarter early. and a half. Early, they just wore it down. Yeah. But this bunch right here, uh, they won this football game going away. They just never were challenged. If you're going to beat this football team, Florida State, you got to beat their defense. Eight-man rush at the line of scrimmage by the Seminoles on this punt. Let's see if they got the return on. If they come after him, they got the return on this time. Best punt of the night. This one lazily turning over. And it fumbled. And the flag is down. I'm not sure he gave him the distance. Play has been whistled down. It looks like that's going to be a flag against North Carolina again. Peter Warwick dropped it. the call run didn't give him enough room it's number 34 Steve Fisher a cornerback so the penalty is going to push it to the 30 yard line Busby comes back out to uh, run the offense Four minutes and 40 seconds showing on the clock. Now, as Thad Busby entered the Heisman race now, because of his play tonight, he's directing his football team. I, I think he now becomes a factor in that race. I don't want to. Regardless of what he enters, I hope, oh boy, this running play hit behind the line that Davis is there to just crumble that one. His minor could go nowhere. I, if nothing else, I hope the kid starts getting some respect because when you only have one loss in almost two years as a starter, uh, you know, it's got to stand for something. Well, last year, when they, he, he was the starting quarterback last year, lost one ball game, and then went into spring practice as a senior and had to win his job. <laughs> now, now, when you talk to him, he said, hey, I thought it was great. I had to win the job. I, I showed a toughness and a fight, and I kept it over in the uh, practice and into the season. So... That probably helped him, but I, I don't know of many seniors that go into their senior year having a great year that he had last year and then have to win their job back, but he did. Here's Miner right at the middle, cuts it to the outside, and will take it to the 30, which is the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, I think Florida State also is very fortunate to have a young man of his quality and temperament and personality because he handled that along with other very testy situations extremely well. We were talking about him before the, the game tonight. You said his heart was pumping, but he shows a calm and a poise that has got to be good as far as the other 10 people he's out there in the field with. Well, you, as your quarterback, you need to show leadership. There's the back of Dan Kendra, who's an outstanding athlete also. And then there's Chris Winkie, number 16, who's the third team quarterback. So they've got capable replacements for that bus. And this running play is going to be stopped short, so it'll be fourth down. Florida State will gladly punt it away as the clock is about to go under three minutes. There's Winkie right there. And you know, Ron, Florida State, uh, they've got a ball game down the road that I think they're probably looking forward to and uh, because of their loss last year uh, to Florida, to the Gators. So uh, they'll be looking forward to that test. Wake Forest ahead, Jimmy Caldwell's team, and then at Gainesville for that big ball game and the revenge game. So 
gets it away. Line drive. Lie on the run, and he will just take it out of bounds as he was losing control of the football. Flag is down. And there is a flag down, or that's what the PA announcer said, but I don't see it. Do you see one, Mike? Oh, there it is. Right, right behind those players. Okay. Procedure against Florida State, personal foul, face mask against Florida State. Well, there's a ton of great college football still to see the rest of this month. Many of them you can't get unless you call and order the ESPN game plan and pay-per-view. 1195 gets you up to 10 extra games which aren't normally available in your area. Call your local cable operator, Direct TV, and ask for the ESPN game plan next week. One thing when you think of Florida State, Ron, think about back when before they joined the ACC, they'd take on all comers. You know, kicking team, penalties decline. Personal foul, dressed in a face mask. On the kicking team during the kick, 15 yards from the previous spot, repeat fourth down. So they'll kick it again and they'll move it back to what, around the 15 uh, yard line. Now, to further your point, I think that's one of the reasons the mentality of the staff and it, it, it's a thing that has continued to be prevalent now that they have become a dominant dominant program because they had to be road warriors and had to play so many people on the road this coaching staff just believes and the players believe that they can play as well on the road as they can at home and remember now they went to places like michigan notre dame Nebraska. State. they never came back to tallahassee <laughs> but that's how they had to be you're known by who you hang around with and Florida State wanted to have that type of schedule. Now they're in the ACC. They still play tough schedule. James Robertson, please go to gate six. James Robertson to gate still six. They'll kick it again, and uh, this one not as long. End of her in. Bly will get a chance. No, he fumbled the ball. And Florida State has gotten on the football at the 32-yard line. The Dre Bly was just trying to make something happen. Another flag down, too. This is going to be on Florida State, so they may punt it again. They're moving again. <laughs> Bobby said, let's get this thing done. I'd like to get on that plane and head home to some birthday cake. Dre Bly trying to make something happen, just make a play, and just didn't look it into his hands. Number 13, Marvin Minnis, wide receiver with the recovery. No, they already had 15 yards. Now they're going to mark it off again. Now the line is the 15. <laughs> I think if I could read the lips, they said, get on the line of scrimmage. Okay. He's wearing the punter out. <laughs> and those guys covering the punt for, as well. This is three times they get to do it. Now another low line drive. And this one's not going to be returnable because it was so short. And uh, it's going to wind up a pretty good deal for Florida State. That is uh, 41 yards on the punt. Mike, I don't know if this is easy to compare or not, but who has a better defense, do you think? Florida State or Michigan then? I'm going to have to go with Florida State. Now, Michigan's awful, awful good on defense, and I know that uh, anytime you don't want to be second in anything, but this Florida State defense, because of all the different parts that they have, the dominating defensive ends, now they got Pittman back inside. they got great linebackers. And then a good secondary, so uh, this has been total domination tonight, and I'm sure Michigan totally dominated Penn State today. Keldorf. Watch the back door. Pass is picked off. Samari Roll makes the interception. Flag is down deep in the secondary following the interception, and he's tackled at the 48-yard line. Mickey Andrews and the defensive coaches 
A Florida State came up with a great game plan tonight against this Florida State offense, against the North Carolina offense. There's Mickey. Still not smiling, Ron. He's, he's not going to smile. Well, all those defensive coaches also, no, with, same, with exception just... of Mickey, it, are, they were running out of the field telling the players to get off the field. Quit celebrating out there. Come celebrate on the sideline. And you can see once they got close to Mickey, he had a hug for Samari Roll, who makes the pickoff. And the difference in these staffs tomorrow, Ron, when North Carolina goes into work Sunday morning uh, and looks at that tape, uh, it's going to be a long Sunday tomorrow. Florida State gets a little easier to look that tape when you win. And, uh, you eat some hamburgers around the office and a little more enjoyable than it's going to be for North Carolina tomorrow. The total offense for Carolina tonight is only 73 yards. They've carried the ball 25 times for a minus 28 because nine sacks take 52 yards off a total offense. So, as you said, total domination, that's the only way to put it. Block with a minute 44 left in this one. Runs it for seven, maybe eight. Take it down by General Leggins. Well, tonight's piece of players of the game from Florida State, Thad Busby. 159 yards. It may not look like a great night, but he was no, the glue. He, he did the Two job tonight. Two touchdowns, and he had the poise and kept them together. And K. Mays for North Carolina. As part of the continuing effort to further the development of amateur athletics, Visa proud to donate $1,000 on behalf of these two athletes to their school's general scholarship funds. Here's Kay Mays. You look into his eyes as Busby comes up on the 32-yard line. And he gives it to Abdullah's fullback who breaks it open. And he's up the sideline and is going to be tackled. And he got out of bounds, so it stops the clock for a moment. And Ron, the toughest coaching job that Mac Brown's going to have this season is going to be tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday before they go to Clemson because he's going to have to get this bunch back up because uh, they, they are going to be deflated because everybody's told them how good they are and uh, they were going to win this football game and to get beat here. Now he has to coach them back up. You can see they are at Clemson and then they have to. And Duke pushed Clemson today down at Clemson, so neither one of them be easy. Now Florida State will simply kneel on the football. And the clock continues to roll. It's at 49 and now 48. It is a happy birthday for the 68-year-old from Tallahassee. And again, his football team will be at nine victories. Bobby Bowden seems to have found the combination from a school that back in 1952 was a woman's school. All of a sudden, it was changed to both men and women, co-ed, and since Bobby Bowden has come there from West Virginia, they have become a dominant, dominant force in college football. You know Bobby feels good. He's taking pictures over there in the sideline. <laughs> oh, my. Well, the infectious smile is uh, out and working now, but it should be. Clock is at 10, and they will not have to run any more plays. Florida State will remain undefeated as our final score. Florida State 20 and North Carolina 3. Stay tuned. The Residence Inn College Football Scoreboard is coming up next. And don't forget, next Saturday night, we'll join you from the SEC. 17th ranked Auburn takes on ninth ranked Georgia between the hedges. For Mike Gottfried, Adrian Karsten, and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Ron Franklin. This has been a presentation.